G'day, hobbyist. Anthony, AOS coach here, bringing you the next faction focus, which is the Ida Neth Deepkin. We're going deep in the sea. We're going to look at what this army has to offer. Welcome, everyone. Who is on the line? I have first Ken. Hello. Give Australia a g'day and an introduction. All right. So I'm Ken. I've been playing wonderful like everyone else quite a little while. Probably like everyone in high school, since the 90s for me and early 2000s. Had a break for a little while and now I'm back at it for the last, say, four years since AOS has come around. So you're both the, back into Sigma? Back to Sigma. Once it came around, that was quite nice, a lot more flexible and honestly more casual for me. The rank and file was not my idea of a good time. So instead, we're now working with the skirmishing system, which is really nice and very flexible. And can I say I love the effort you've gone to to set up the hobby scene with us? With that beautiful the fish tank, uh, and changed your name as well, like Ken Van Ship. Yep, uh, the ship and the deep kin, it all does make sense. If you speak a bit of Dutch, it literally translates to from the ship. Amazing. Ooh. This is why you are a deep kin expert. <laughs> it lines up surprisingly well. You were born for this. What? Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> Maybe he was born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. It's Maybelline. No, All right, look at that! Look at that! Look at that flawless skin. And who are you? Let's what, let's do the, the introduction, the nice segue. That was like a really awkward one. <laughs> Say hello, Ben. Hello, um, I'm Ben Spaghetti. Um, as many of you know me, uh, I've been playing Sigma since about the mid of GHB one, um, but not actually seriously playing until like uh, the second edition GHB. Um, I play KO, and I have now recently enjoyed the pleasure of close combat instead of ranged combat. Um, I'm part of the Notorious Clan Filth and also part of the Three Winds Grins. Um, so I'm like double teaming groups at the moment. I don't even know what that group is, but it's, I'm it's, glad to have yeah, both. You, you, better, you. you better watch out. You better watch out for it. A, a double teaming or the three win grins? The, the three win grins. That we, we, we aim for three wins and then we're happy. <laughs> At a one day or a two day? -er? A two day. -er. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I am? I don't know. You're not in Clan good. Filth. Well, look, the, the world good. is watching. They may not know who Clan Filth is, but I'm happy to have both of you on the line, I think. And uh, from my opinion, you are two of Australia's best uh, Iden and Dipkin players. You both performed exceptionally well at CanCon, and you have a long history of playing with Deepkin. So I couldn't think of better people to get on the show than both of you. So uh, Anthony, thank you both. It's, thank you Ken. it's Ken and Ben, the Fishmen. Man, <laughs> that's now the official title of the show. Please, and I just, I'm just, I'm just embarrassed myself in front of the internet. Excellent. <laughs> oh, well, what else is the show. internet here for? Oh, Anthony, God. you are the soulless husk, and we are the soul mages that are going to put a soul into you. Well, I am the free guild who you jump out of the sea and steal my soul, and then I don't remember it. Uh, no, 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 no. We took your soul, we took your wife's soul, and we took your children's souls. I don't have a child. I've got a dog. Don't touch my dog's soul because I'll come for you. Uh, we um, take rat people's souls. It's fine. We'll take your dogs. All right. I'm going to reel this back in because I'm yeah, trying yeah, to be right. semi-professional here. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Hey, I gave, up with, I gave you a jingle. That's professional. This is uh, this is something that I don't Ooh. think I got a 5R to buy. So um, yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you both. Yeah. Anytime. Um, all right, really back in. Who are the Iden the Deepkin? Let's imagine someone is seeing these pretty models but have not picked up the book. Who are this force? Ken, you go. Oh, I don't know about that. To me, they are the fish people. They come from the sea. They kill everything. They go back to the sea. We're all very happy and easy. There is more story, but that's probably not my strong suit. That's... That's the very um, too long, don't read, um, didn't read sort of summary. Uh, look, it's in the book. Uh, I read the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I drove eel into people. It was very enjoyable. All right. But, so, um, all right I'm going to jump in as the narrative gamer then. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, then, th yeah. let, let us talk about the Deepkin. I won't go in for too long. Um, so, for old fantasy players, if you ever heard of a guy called Teclas, um, him and his brother, 
Tyrion became gods in the mortal realms. Um, they extracted some souls from Slaanesh. The last souls that were ingested by Slaanesh were those that were worshipping Maplan, the god of the sea. And so they were basically the first souls that came out. And Teclis was basically given those portions of souls to make his own elves. Um, and he was like, being Teclis, he's an arrogant. I won't swear. Um, um, and he made his own elves and he's tried, he taught them, but then he saw some like darkness in them. And um, long story short, he made a massive screw up and uh, he wanted to destroy his creations. And they basically all just fled to the, the deepest parts of the ocean, basically where they, where they were before Slaanesh. And yeah, then they realized that the their children weren't having souls when they were born. So one in every hundred was born with a soul. Um, and so they had to work out how do we infuse our kids with these souls? And so basically that's the story. They, they raid coastal villages and towns um, or inland like deserts and stuff. And yeah, they basically just, they just need souls to survive. I do it's like the a system. The fact that it's a, eat the sea is hilarious. It's it's an it's incredibly interesting but incredibly tragic story. Um, so when you see the models, like the guys with no eyes are the Namadi. They're like the the not very long living elves. They live like thirty years. And then you've got the guys in the eels and the 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 guys with eyes. Basically, are the the ones with souls, the lucky ones, whose job is to get more souls to make more the money it's very oh. cast it's a very cast system you've got and, the low and basically cost sticking cost. it to techless because he screwed up and uh his elves are, are done and hopefully Tyrion and um no no, no, no that they're not done no no, no 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 they're not done he's he'll he'll have more elves don't worry this is just his first experiment he'll be back don't worry all right well i look forward to destruction elves next um but um, also, one part of the story that is fantastic, or I really enjoy, is the Ether Sea part. So they come from a place that doesn't exist. We just proved the Ether and scientifically a long time ago. So just a lovely little side is they come from a place that we know is not real. They raid your villages. They go back to a place we know is not real, and we forget about them. You don't yep. even remember them. They're just a nightmare. Yep, it's pretty it's much. a lovely, lovely bit of fluff for me that they come from somewhere that doesn't exist, and they go back to where it doesn't exist. And you can't find them because they're gone. So, like, there's, I'm a little... I'm, I'm like... I'm, I'm little Billy and uh, I'm a fisherman and, you know, I go to my docks and my friend who I've been fishing with for a long time just disappears one day. Um, do I remember that little little Jack oh, is... Oh, the whole town's gone. The whole you, town. Like, oh, yeah, no, little, little Billy doesn't exist anymore either. Well, he might, but the town's gone. He's forgotten the town existed. He's just on the fishing boat saying, why am I here? What am I doing? There's no town. There's no house. There's no nothing. He was, he was the lucky one that wasn't in the village when it was raided. There you go. So he, so he comes he comes along and like there's like seaweed and like the smell of the sea. He's in the desert, right? And there's like the smell of the sea is everywhere. And he's like, what the hell is that smell? Like it's disgusting, and gross. And everyone's like floating weirdly with like their hair like in water kind of thing. It's really weird. So sea creatures and raiding raiding villages for souls and uh, pl playing with uh, the beautiful creatures and sticking it with a bunch of blind people from Teclas. Uh, sounds like your type of army, the Eidneth Deepkin, are for you. Um, so you guys both been playing for a while. Um, what attracted you to this army? Uh, was it the lore? Was it the models? Was it... For me, I love to paint, and I had an airbrush reasonably recently, and it is lovely round and contoured surfaces that you can airbrush and get really bright colours, really good contrast. The eels, the sharks, they're all fantastic to paint. Uh, the models themselves, I, I didn't actually check the rules before I bought the models. I just bought the brightest things I could paint to have great fun with, with the airbrush. <laughs> I, and, I've checked the rules later. I didn't realize it was actually good when I bought them in terms of competitively. I just bought them because that would be fun to paint. And they have been great. I've painted a fairly good army and they've been fun the whole way through. And their poses, I didn't realize this when I bought into them, but looking at more and more carefully, I've done a bit of sword fighting. And the fact that they've actually motion capped real people all the stances with the thralls are actual natural sword stances. They actually move in natural movements. They're not the old rank and file. 
a sort of a square flat body with an arm and a shield hanging off the side. These are actual naturally moving models and it's very fluid. They look fantastic. The actual actual design quality is absolutely fantastic with them. And Ben? Um, so I was really excited when they first came out. I bought the book and then I just couldn't write a list that I was happy with. And then um, 2.0 came out and then I was like, okay, yep, this is this is the army now. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it. Um, and I really focused heavily on the sharks because I really like the sharks and I think they're like some of the really cool models. Um, and then I basically just used it as a like a, just a painting project really, um, just to learn how to free do freehand. Like it was more just very experimental for me. Um, uh, it was to take an obscure list and just sort of go crazy with it and just like lots of freehand and like there's so many beautiful things from like nature and like the ocean and stuff that like you can just take like patterns on fish and stuff like that and it's just so much fun trying to replicate that um oh, and yeah that's what i'm that's that's why i was drawn to them really yeah no great and like when i when it very first came out um i remember looking at it thinking this is something that is so unusual and different from everything else in Sigma, from the the creatures that were on the bases that you could kind of put on, you know, the the Eidolon, uh, the wave cloaks and the the colors. And um, for me, like, I, I, don't, I, I don't play with them. Um, it's something that I definitely uh, am interested in playing with or at least painting because it looks like a unique challenge. Um, yeah. But they're just they beautiful are, sculpts. Like they are, they are. But they are incredibly fragile. <laughs> they are like ridiculously fragile. So if you're ever going to like start them as your first army, I would recommend. Yeah, yeah. Look, I definitely would recommend pausing and thinking about your um, your your choices. <laughs> that seems uh, to be good. Headdresses and stuff. Sorry, you had a mad pause, so like it, I, I just like filled in the gaps, but that that uh, knowledge bomb has been lost in time. Sorry, Ben. Oh no! All right, that's fine. Don't worry. But but they're a great army, really enjoyable to paint. Um, definitely uh, now have the rules to back them up and and make them competitive on the table and, and really enjoy playing with them. So let me ask you, what are the strengths of the Deepkin? many there are many strengths <laughs> it just depends on what you want to build them around really um they're very reliable with their hitting and their wounding um most of the army's threes and threes so they're a combat army very combat -y, yeah um there's not a lot of shooting not a lot of also, good shooting in there as no well. matter what you do with the army you can't build them to be a very very low quality uh, no matter how weird you build them they're always at least mid tables but they, all their models are good on their own. They work better when you clean them properly, but it's very hard to make an army that can't compete with anything. You, I don't think you could ever really build a true horde Eidneth army. They're very low model count. So they're more um, of an elite army. I mean, you've got the three. And, we'll, yeah. and, we'll, and we'll talk about like the different yeah, army yeah. choices. But... Um, the strength, I think it's... it's uh, the, it's the, the, the tides are real strength, like they're like really powerful once you like learn to like grasp what you can do with them and you've just got to you've really just got to think ahead with them um like what's happening but yeah the tides are really strong um and, speed. and ken, you're the, fast and you fly between and ken, ken just for the people who um who may not have picked up this book yet what is this tide that ben's talking about oh well, that's easy um so basically you've got five turns and each turn there's a unique rule in play and they cycle through for Rob. Basically, the game starts in theory quite slow. You start in cover, but then you start running and charging as the tide builds up. You have a high tide on turn three where you strike first, which is the traditional power turn. Run the standard tide build. Your kings can add more attacks, so it is your traditional power turn. In turn four, you're um, retreating and charging. So if you didn't get the kill, you still get to charge in turn four because you retreat away. And then turn five, you're back to cover cover again yeah. yeah yeah back to cover but there's ways you can manipulate that and um so the strength is just, yeah it kind of represents the wave crashing into an army and then the water kind of retracting is kind of like the is that is that right the, the theory behind yeah, yeah. 
it's a tide shifting and they're named about what phase the tide is in. The tides work out of the book reasonably well and you need to leave the tide. You can't play with them if you want to use your command ability, which is make your high tide a lot stronger with uh, Volturnus or the King, which adds attacks to your units. But yeah, oh. the, the strength is you, you can... I know lots of people do the eel build, but it's very... It's, you can build a fairly flexible army. Like, they're very fast. Their strengths are very incredibly fast. Um, they, they hit like a truck. Um, and yeah, like... The, just the amount of movement they can get, they're very, very powerful. Yeah, it's yeah. Movement. movement's a big, big tick. Everything Deepkin that you want to play with is quick. Eels so and shocks. Movement and, and combat are the two, the two things. Or yeah, even to get the combat, you can be wherever you need to be. Uh, and if your opponent has an objective with a couple of guys capped in the corner, you can probably jump on it across the table. I mean, if you're in the run and charge turn, if you have a base move 14 with both heel types, you have a six inch run and then a charge, and then you might have a plus three to charge the unit we'll talk about later. So you can go across the table to hit something if you need to. Great. And you guys mentioned um, shooting was something that is quite lacking. It's it's definitely, you have some shooting, but it's not like you have an abundance of shooting. Is there any other weaknesses that you've kind of noticed or you consider when you're list building? Bravery. Bravery is massive weakness for Ideneth. Um they're most of the stuff, most of the infantry stuff is, is bravery six. And so if you don't have ways to increase your bravery or um, make like um, have command points to make the battle shock immune, like they will be running, they will run. And you do, you do not want your like army to be running, like your low model count army to be running. Um, they, they've, they've got like iron jaw problem, basically. Brutes, brutes just run away and you don't want brutes to run away. A lot of high wound, low model, um, exactly yeah you, you just you need to be very very careful with them um yeah I, in my experience i've had like sharks run and that's not fun mm. when an eight wound 140 point model runs <laughs> you're like that's not cool uh, but there's ways to manage that so um also there's not there's not a lot of um magic like magic. stick a bit like sticking power, you can't, you can't hang around in combat for like three or four turns. It's just not, it's not, they won't deal with it very well. Yeah. And I know, I know Ken and I were talking before the show started about, you know, some of the challenges with, let's say like a, a Hagnar or a, um, you know, a, a, a Grimgast Reaper kind of um, build. And it's definitely by the sounds of it, it's quite hard to, to grind out a battle and, and, and you, last. You a number you of just rounds can't, you can't grind i do not grind they just don't um you, just need, you, you need to pick your fights that's that you just need to to avoid that you just need to pick the fights and where you are um more they don't like mortal wounds but then any army doesn't like mortal wounds so um i will say magic there is so they got enclaves uh which give you some buffs for the whole unit there is one enclave that buffs magic, but I tend to find Deepkin magic's quite difficult because we've only got single casters in general and we've got no buffs to our casting. We do have a double caster, but they're very, very expensive for their casting ability. So yeah. I, I tend to run the um, Maelstrom in and say, I won't cast, but I'll mess with my opponent's casting instead. But that's a, a weakness I find. However, our movement is so strong and we charge pretty hard so it makes up for it. So movement, like shenanigans that stop our, us from moving quickly hurts a lot. Um, and debuffs as well. Just debuffs just hurt. I mean, no one likes debuffs, but debuffs hurt a lot when you need to. You've got low models and you just need to like get ev squeeze every little bit out of them. It's just, yeah, it's a nightmare having neg one to hit, neg two to hit. So what I'm hearing is that uh, Deepkin is not like a Stormcaster army. That's a utility, you know, does a bit of everything in every phase. It, Deepkin is very much like uh, a scalpel approach to surgery where you have, you know, really, really good movement, really, really, really good combat. You're a specialist in these fields, uh, but, you know, you've got to, as you, I think, Ben, you said, pick your battles wisely and yeah. know that oh. you can't grind, know yeah. that, you know, you probably can't go one-on-one -on -one with Nagash. I'll um, rephrase what you said a little bit. We're fantastic, you, you, well, you, We're fantastic you, charging. I wouldn't go into combat. If you can't win on the charge, don't do it. Yeah. Well, not there are some units that can do it, but it's not you can't you can't outgrind like Nurgle or Daughters of Cain. You just can't. 
Um, so you need to, you've got the movement, so you might as well use it to pick pick your combats, basically. Awesome. Um, All right, so yeah. this is good. I think it's a bit of a reality check. So think about the way you're building, and I think this is kind of a, a perfect segue into start thinking about the list builds, some of the hero choices, the unit choices, and how do you start either leveraging those strengths uh, or then start mitigating some of those weaknesses and how you can kind of play around and, you know, can you alluded to uh, an endless spell earlier, but let's actually dig in and go, right, well, I'm starting my army. What are the hero choices that stand out for you? And why do you include these units in a deep kin army? Ken? Or I'll, have a, I'll talk a little bit differently. So I've got a preferred list I quite like to run with at the moment, and sort of what I consider a core deep kin if you want to play absolute bleeding edge competitive. I disagree, but 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 that, and, right. and, and this is why this these two are great because they are run of two very different armies. So you traditionally see uh, a certain type of build with deepkin, and it definitely doesn't show off the entire range. But um, you know, this is really about you and the style of army you want to play, uh, the models you want to buy, uh, as well as are you a narrative, are you a uh, casual gamer, or are you looking to win a, a big tournament? So. Uh, this is going to be good. So, Ken, give me who are your hero choices. All right. So, I said I go for the more traditional deep king competitive build. So, with that one there, I run three heroes. Um, I run a soul scryer. So, that one is my general. Now, the reason I do this is we mentioned the tides table a little oh, bit earlier. You mean tidecaster? Sorry, tidecaster. Um, I run a tidecaster as my general because it allows me to play with the tides. So I like the Tides table, but I tend to find that its power turn is turn three. And I find that most of my games are finished. Um, I hit a little bit in turn one. And by the end of turn two, the game is won. Either I've charged hard enough and won, or if I haven't done enough damage in turn two, I'll probably break against their army and they'll come around turn three and take me off the table. Based on the, the sort of more defensive armies if you don't do enough damage in the early part i struggle with them because i get i run all more side guard and their power is on the charge rather than on the fight so if they don't charge they drop in efficiency dramatically so what i do is i run a soul tidecaster sorry the names get confused sometimes the tidecaster as my general uh so that's got a very nice spell riptide which does give the enemy nick one to hit and also does d3 damage a turn after it's a fantastic spell. It's a seven to cast. It's a little bit tricky, but it is a debuff, which I do like. I honestly don't cast it very much. I tend to cast shield a lot more because my tide cast is normally out of range of the debuff. I buff up some eels that I'm going to charge with. So the second hero I tend to run. So 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 go back go back to the tide thing. So you've got your with your tide cast. You've got your um, sorry to butt in. Um, yeah. You've got you've got turn one, which is cover. Turn two, run and charge or run and shoot. Turn three, everyone attacks first. Turn four, retreat and shoot. And then turn five, repeats the thing again. What yep. the Tidecaster does is if she's your general, you can choose at the start of the, the game or whatever to flip that on its head. So in the first turn, you'll be retreating and charging. Turn two is everyone attacks first. Turn three is run and charge. And then turn four is cover, and then turn five is back to retreat and charge. Why would so you want to do that? I think is the is the question yeah, burning yeah, yeah. for me. I, I just there's to one clear more that piece up. here. Yeah, there's, there's one more piece I'll mention with what Ben has just said, which is totally correct. When you run enclaves, which is another bit where so we're adding everyone right at the start, rather than going through a bit systematically, but enclaves, what they do is they give you another set of special rules. So there's a couple of popular ones and a couple of less so popular ones. Uthan is the one I tend to run. It's got two mechanics. They're both very nice. I've got three, but there's one I don't really use at all. The one I really like with it is it changes your retreat and charge to a run and charge. Now, why that's important is when you do reverse tides food down list in turn one, three, and five, you can run and charge, and turn two, you strike first. Turn four is cover, but I don't find that a big deal because the game's normally done one way or the other by that point in time. It has a second ability which improves the wound character wounding of your um, eels and uh, basically the, the attacks of the eels, not the riders, which is very nice too. But the bigger one for me is honestly the um, turn one, run and charge, turn two, strike first. 
Uh, I'll talk a bit about why I do things in the strategy I use later, but that's that's a really big deal uh, playing with the tides. It, it's very, very powerful. Like just getting into your opponent's face, killing their chap line, and then getting in again and just like, all right, I attack first now. And like your opponent can just do nothing really. So yeah, no, that's great. No, that's, this is <laughs> this is really good because you know just because you can doesn't mean you should. And it's good to know not what you can do, but why you should do it. So um, that was a really good explanation. Thanks. So the second hero which I find critical in the list I build is my Soul Scryer. Now it's got two jobs. Job one is it can start off the table with up to two units with the default enclaves. There is a, an additional enclave that gives you up to three off the table. I like it because I can put one pack of eels off the table. And I even sometimes put thralls off the table. Now these come onto the board edge within six of the edge and nine away. But in addition, at the start of the combat phase, it gives you within 24 inch range plus three to charge a target unit. Basically, you need to end your charge within a half inch, but it lets you increase your charge range by three. And baked into the eel's wall scroll is a re-roll charges. So effectively, you've got a re-rolling six inch charge when you come off the table edge with your eels, which is very hard to fail. Uh, and it gives the opponent a lot of fear if they leave holes in the back line. And so they always need to cover their back line. I, I don't think I've ever failed one of those charges. <laughs> I have against I, Anthony. Yeah, I was going to say he did it. He did it to me. And Stephen <laughs> Jury did it to me as well uh, at Sydney Slaughter. So he, I think he, uh, he yeah, failed twice. So I'm like, Oh, these these eels don't do much. They don't they don't pass very often. And then in my last game, uh, they still punch me in the face really hard. But yeah. yes, I've had two double fails. I, I like the soul scryer too, but I like it for completely different reasons, which I'll explain after Ken. Yeah. So I use it predominantly to start off the table edge. It can start on and um, Ben will probably talk about, but I use it as a fear unit, effectively or terror, which makes my opponent cover their back line and make sure I can't get onto the back edge anywhere. On top of that one there, because I'm not playing with my battle line allowance, I need to use the foot and the marty as battle line. So that's the archers or the melee guys, the reavers or the um, thralls. I like the thralls a lot. I haven't actually tried reavers, but I would like to give it a go soon. The thralls I actually really like. They've only got one inch range, so I only use them in packs of 10 because uh, they can't fight over each other. But they're one of those units that is relatively cheap and gets ignored. If an opponent ignores them in turn two, they get bonus attacks against one win models. But what I really like is they're two monsters. I've killed Ben's and Eidolon. I've killed mm -hmm. uh, Ariel. They've killed a lot of big things that don't realize that Thralls do threes to hit, threes to wound, one rend, two damage. In turn one, they get reroll ones to hit. And when you add that all together, that's really unpleasant. And in turn two, they strike first. So they will charge your monster and they will put some serious hurt onto it, if not kill it outright. Yeah, they're great yeah. for those those either one wound or four wound plus. If you're in that two to two to Storm three. Stormcast is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> and so is cavalry. I hate light cavalry because the trials do nothing to them. It's annoying, yeah. Um yeah, I like Zang they're perfect against enlightened and like disc zangle absolutely perfect because they're four wounds and they just they will just murder them a zangle must strike first and they don't want to but if you get 10 thralls in a six zangle you're going to put on a lot of hurt and probably delete the squad yeah just got a five up save goes to six up taking two damage a hit that's not nice and honestly so that's not a full two thousand points oh sorry last thing i add on there is eels um, so I run their more traditional list, which makes Ben sad. It is the cheese list. It is the net list. It has got 18 eels. I run them in three lots of six rather than two lots of nine. And the reason I use sixes is because you can start a six off the table and get it on reasonably easy. It's hard to zone out to the nine. It also means that if I want to be tricky about it, I can toss one in turn one and mess with my opponent's pile in so I can get within three of several squads and mess up their movement. And I can lose a three, or they won't be as effective as possible, but it does mess with their moving in their army and mess with their charging. They get stuck in combat. Or if one of my sixes dies, I've still got another six. I've still got two sixes available to charge with. 
So it's very redundant having three sixes of eels. So for me, that's the competitive backbone of most DPGs you're going to find on the internet. They're mostly going to be food there in reverse tides. 30 foot troops, 18 eels, and those two heroes. And that comes to 15, 80 points. So, so you're still at 420. It's, it's, so it's interesting that, uh, you know, despite me asking the question just purely based on hero, the way that Ken is really looking at his army, correct me if I'm wrong, Ken, is it's got a super synergy. So you're thinking not just about the hero choice and then like what are the battle line to support it or the other way around. You're really looking at this as a team. And I think with the uh, off-boarding eels, that's, uh, that, that, that trifecta is, uh, is so important to kind of maximize and consider what you're going to take both in the hero and the, the unit choice. That, that's the important thing with IDNF is that the hero choices will, everyone's a team player and you need to really like focus on what, you can't just pick a hero and just be like, oh, I'm just gonna take him for fun. Like you really need to like focus in on like which heroes are gonna be the best for this list kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And so what what um, what um what are the heroes that stand out for you, Ben? Like, do you, do you agree with Ken or are you going I, a different I, way? I no, I totally agree with Ken. Um, the Tidecaster is amazing. It, it's it's a nice little wizard. Um, she's got some access to some great spells. Um, I like putting the the law the the, the um, laws of the deep on her and having her uh, with the pressure of the deep and being able to pop. Um, that's a spell where you cast it and then you pick a model and if you roll over its wound characteristics, it you just get removed. So it's great for removing uh, demon banners. Or oh, uh, then, then they can't come back. <laughs> um, or like breaking like holes in lines and then like making them just battle shock off. After the battle shock, they have to remove coherency rules. Um, great for uh, chain rasps. You kill the kill that little dude with the um the banner and he's like they're six bravery now um it's really handy um but no mess her messing with the tides is, is interesting um she's she's also really good um the soul square i like for completely different reasons the the charge thing is great but being able to the option of taking her off board is also great but i love using her for or him or her uh for uh, yeah, yeah, yeah uh for rituals getting the rituals off now that's something we haven't even talked about at all so let me introduce you to the world of rituals so rituals um, not a prayer ritual prayer spell they're ritual, ritual they're kind of they're not really a prayer they're not really a spell they're just like another ability that i didn't get kind of thing um so they go off naturally on a 10. now very importantly you need an isharan hero to be able to get one off so that's the Ishran heroes. heroes other four. heroes You've got Lotan, you've got the Soul Render, you've got the Soul Scry, and you've got the Tidecaster, the four foot foot guys. Um, only they can activate a ritual. Um, and so you get a choice of, and they, so they go off on a 10. You roll two dice and they go off on a 10. You get the choice of three. So the first one is you your opponent doesn't get to fly. Uh, the second one is your opponent doesn't get the benefits of cover. And then the third one is all Eidolons heal a single wound, and then they get to reroll all of their hit rolls until your next hero phase, <laughs> which is amazing. So what I like the Soul Scroll for is that she adds plus two to that because she's a priest. There's ways you can manipulate that that roll to make it a lot lower. So um, it goes off on a 10, but if you are uh, an issue around hero with a priest keyword, you get plus two to the roll. If you have another Ishran hero uh, nearby, you get another plus one. Um, if they're a wizard, they get plus one. If you're near a boat, they get plus one. So um, I usually get a combo down to about plus four on my ritual and usually goes off on a six. Um, I like, I feel the rituals are, are a big, powerful, um, deep kin ability that not a lot of people use. I haven't really seen. No, um, I, I can honestly say that it's not really something that gets mentioned very often. So. No, and I think they're incredibly powerful. Um, just not just like stopping your enemy from flying is like a real like just nasty little trick. Yeah, so um, not flying is a surprise for everyone, and no one appreciates being told yeah. monsters behind your troops. Yeah, I think it actually happened to me. Maybe Ben, you actually might have done it to me with a terrorgeist where I was trying to ambush a terrorgeist 
from the backfield with uh, the Legion of Night. And I remember you dropping down that um, that can't fly. And my Terrorgeist not only got wounded, but then started, had to walk and crawl um, to combat, which was, uh, which was really nasty. Yeah. Um, also, the cover one is great against Stormcast that want to, like, castle up. Um, just them, that just their, their, their smile when they're like, oh, I've got a two-up save, rah, rah, rah. And then you're just like, no, you don't get the benefits of cover. It's great for, like, um, uh, Cell Star Ballistas in cover because they get, like, a two-up save. So just stopping them from getting their two-up save is great. Um, just if you really want to pick up a character that's just, like, stuck in there, like Sylvaneth, it's great for Sylvaneth. You've got like a branch which is like like two up save or something like a plus two to their save or something. You just like nope, no, you don't, you don't get it. Sorry. Um, and the idol on one is ridiculously powerful as well. Um, uh, so that's why I like Soul Scry, um for that utility. Um, the, the Volturnus is just amazing. Um, he's just a beat stick. I would pick him over a king any day. <laughs> um, why? Why? Why are you picking Volturnus? Uh, because, so, he buffs your Akelian stuff. He gives them all reroll ones to hit in a 18-inch bubble around him. You have to be holy within that, but it's very easy to keep him holy within 18. The regular king is 12, and so it's not that easy to keep everything, but with 18 inches, it's massive. Um, so he's giving reroll ones to hit on all your Akelian stuff, so that's the turtle, the eels, uh, and the sharks and himself and the kings. Um, and he also gives off plus one bravery as well, which is what you need to keep deep can alive. <laughs> um, so going from bravery six eels to bravery seven eels, if you just lose one eel, you're not battle shocking at all, which is fantastic. I'll just make one quick counterpoint to Volturnus. He is fantastic, especially if you're not reversed the tides and he's your general. His ability only works if he's your general, so you can't play the reverse tides game. So that's no, no, yeah. very different to mine. Yeah, but I would if you were reversing the tides, I would still take him as a character just because he gives those buffs to those Akelian stuff. Uh, I take the king because uh, I give him the item. That's something I lack is ability to hold objectives and things like place of arcane power. And my king can carry an item is my alternative version. Yeah, but yeah, alternative yeah that, that's fair enough. Um, and there's definitely, I, and, and that was going to be one of the things I wanted to call out was the differences between the king versus Volturnus, and there's pros yeah. and cons around, you know, one being a named character, you know, the the different abilities between the two, and I think the king is slightly cheaper than Volturnus, so he's thirty um, points cheaper. I, I, to be honest, I think Volturnus has already got two artifacts on him. He doesn't need more artifacts. Oh no! He's, if only he counted as a wizard, I'd love him. His, no, God, no, no, no. His, his shield <laughs> being able to ignore spells on a three up is amazing. Um, so he's not getting punked at all by endless spells or even like debuff spells. And his his sword is hit rolls of sixes go at neg five rend. <laughs> no one expects the neg five rend. Can I, can I pause for a second? I'd like you to repeat what you just said. So all right. there is all right. a. No, no, no. Just like, I just want like a bold underline hashtag. What was the rend? Neg five. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So yeah, so hits of sixes on his sword, his astrosolus does is resolved at neg five rend. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Um so uh, to be honest, those they're two artifacts in my head, and like they're oh. they're worth everything. They're fantastic. Oh, and the fact that his command ability is a lot better than the king's. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So his the king's command ability is in your in during high tide, you pick a unit and it gets plus one to its uh attack all of its at me melee attack profiles. Oh, one thing though, it's if he's your general. That's important. If he's your general, yeah, general, yeah. Unfortunately. Um, Volturnos though is you get to pick three units for the price of one command point. <laughs> including himself um to get plus one to your um attack, attack profiles. profiles basically it's 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 just so much better and it's yeah. eight, you have to be holy within 18 of him the king is you have to be holy within 12 difficult um that's why i like Volturnus. he's amazing i think what, what what's really kind of standing out to me is that there are two great choices but then also when you look at something like the Eidolons as well, you've got two great choices and there's oh, really these pros and cons and 
the way that you want to play the army. So again, it's probably I've seen lots of arguments between you know Storm versus C. And uh, before we move into that, is there anything else we want to talk about Volturnus versus King? Um, I think you know. I think there's no think bad he's, option. I think there's he's, two. He's, the king is seven wounds, and Volturnus is eight wounds. So, so they both charge. They both hit hard. The king's damage output's totally fine. The reason I use the king purely is because he carries an artifact, and that's for the place of arcane power and chasing the orb around on yep. um, Fury Scalpo. But if it wasn't for those two, Volturnus is probably better across the board. I give my artifact to, to my idol on because it's better. But what a uh, lovely yeah. segue! What a lovely segue, Anthony. Let us talk about the beautiful the beautiful wave cape men. And even you know, because I imagine that uh, a newer Deepkin player is definitely going to buy this model. It's it's beautiful. It's fantastic. And then looking at this, going well, there's two options. What do I build? And you know, there might be a lot of confusion. So, build talk storm. to us about Storm bully. and Sea. Um, I think they both have they both have their strengths. Um, it just depends how you want to probably build. bully. He just chases down all your little heroes, your little casters. He does enough rent. He's quick enough. You can't escape him. He retreats and charges, and doesn't have a monster characteristic, so he doesn't take, doesn't degrade as he gets beaten up. So, so he... if this is a boxing match, we got we got Storm versus C oh, in the storm. left. Sorry, just Storm. Just hold it there, Storm. Storm no, wins no, no, in a boxing no, no, match. No, no, no. Storm in the... wins in a boxing match. C right. wins in an exam. In the left corner, we have aspect of the C. The C is a spellcaster. What are the traits of the spellcaster? Why would I take this particular build? Just, just storm. I put yeah. my bets. I've already, I've already. Sorry, I've already gone to the the tab and already put my bets on the on the storm. Sorry, sorry. it's a storm. This is storm. So, is, so is C dirt? Like, should I no. not 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 do it? <laughs> no, no, no. So we'll 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 explain the differences between them. Um, they're they're both good. Um, they just have very different um, utilities. So. What do you get storm? Boy, the Caesar support card. The Caesar support model. It supports yeah, your arm yeah. with nice magic. It has some like reasonable billy, okay magic. It's quick. Uh, it can carry an item. It's already a wizard, so it ticks all those boxes. But it is pricey, and that's kind of its headache. But both of them are very pricey. But the storm is four hundred, so it's an ally level for other armies. If you want to play it with a non deacon army, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I think the the C the wizard one fits in into certain lists a lot better than the storm does. Uh, particularly if you were running like a heavy Namadi list, you might want to run the C over the storm just because of that um, bravery buff. Uh, bra like plus plus three bravery with Namadi is amazing, um, and plus getting just like supporting spells and like he's he's tanky. He can heal. He can heal himself. Um, oh, we should mention the spell. It's D6 units take neg one to hit. Short so range. He's got, he's got two spells. He's a double caster and he gets two spells. His synergy spell is nice. It's short range, but it is very nice if you can get it off and it'll mess with your opponent very badly. You can, you can, you can, you can protect him pretty easily. Like you just put a unit of, of eels in front of him and then he's, he's pretty fine. He can move up pretty close and start getting that stuff off. Yeah. So, so okay. his, his spell is very much, uh, it's, Goes up on a seven, something like yes, it's a it's a seven. Um, but you pick. It's called Tsunami of Terror, and then you pick D six units within twelve of him, and they all get yeah. minus one to hit, which is brilliant. Um, and then his other one is you get to heal D three wounds on an Ideneth unit, or do D three wounds to a non Ideneth unit. And what's also nice, if he does it, he gets a free reroll for spell casts, and if he doesn't use it, he heals. Yep. The CS Storm both have a baked in heal mechanic. So the storm charges it heals. If this guy doesn't use a reroll, he heals. So, so I'm hearing I'm hearing that the Eidolon of the C is a good independent spellcaster. Uh it has some tricks, but uh from uh, what I can uh, see I wouldn't say that he's independent. I feel like you need to keep him protected. Okay. Very it's much. Too so. expensive to be a good spellcaster. It's yeah, he's like cards. you don't want to throw him out on his own. Like you need him to be supported by other. He'll support them, and then they'll support him. I think that's. Sorry, when I say definitely. when I say independent, I I mean definitely more resilient than some of these smaller wound casters. But you're obviously paying two, three, four times the amount that, uh, like I'm paying for on like a grot wizard. 
Um, so current, <clears throat> currently not to date in it anything, but he is 440 points. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a, it, is, it, it, it is a big investment in your army. So if you're going to go down this route, it is almost it's 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 one basically one fifth or just over one fifth of your um your two thousand point army. Yeah, it's it's almost yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, so that's the C. He's a very good support character. The Storm, however, is a very good character individually on his own. Um, he is one angry mofo. <laughs> But he hits hard to charge. He doesn't. His back damage is not that high, but it's reliable. So he'll max out at like 15 damage, maybe 18 damage tops. But he'll reliably stick 10, 12 onto most things, which again, I love to chase little heroes with him. You've got a, a um, Stormcast Wizard with six, six, five, six wounds. You've got any sort of caster, five, six wounds. He's going to chase them and pick them out. And he's quick. Yeah, so he can charge in, and then he can retreat and charge in the same turn, which is one of the most powerful mechanics in Age of Sigma is being able to retreat and then charge again into something. Um, he also heals in the charge as well, which is amazing. Yeah. So if he gets like one or two wounds on him from something. He just charges in and just heals those two wounds back up again. He heals D3. And so he's, not he's, not he's not named. He's not named. Yeah, both of them are not named. You take an artifact on him. Um, he also is really good. Um, he also gives Ideneth units within nine of him, not wholly within, just within, uh, reroll ones to wound, which is also fantastic. So for him, on the charge, if you charge in, in my case, one of the uh, run and charge turns, you also get reroll ones on your charge that turn for me. So he's a twos rerolling ones, twos rerolling ones, two rend, three damage. No, he's threes re-rolling ones, two re ones. One no, he doesn't. Oh, my mistake, my mistake. Oh, he's plus three. one damage, plus one damage. Plus one damage, yes, plus one yeah, damage. Yeah. Plus one damage, yeah. yeah. Whatever so, it so, is, I'm pissing my pants because that sounds like it's going to be nasty. Yeah. Oh, he's um, he's not going down by himself. He's, he's bringing no. some friends. Yeah, yeah, so what this all means with his my uh, re-roll ones to wound is that if you have a king nearby your eels, um, they are hitting on threes, re-rolling ones to hit from Volturnals, and then they're wounding on threes, re-rolling ones from the idol. <laughs> so it's just this ridiculously consistent powerhouse, and it's just like it's basically rolling like a two up, essentially. Um, if you can get that, but he's more than happy to go off on his own as well and just wreck havoc somewhere. He's also within, not wholly within. Yeah, that ability is not wholly within as well. It's just within nine. So you just tag stuff on. They're cheeky, but that's good. And I think this is where uh, this is a beautiful segue into the the unit choices and potentially um, so the battle line option. So oh, I will no, 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 hang on, hang on. Oh, I, I, will stop you there. More. I will stop you there for a second. Oh. Let us talk about Lotan. <laughs> well, before this, stick with this guy and say items. If you give him a... Um... Uh, Amulet, he's got a three up save. If you give him um, the Cloud of Midnight, he can get out of combat for a turn. He's not a monster. His save is already good. And if you don't do this, you can give him cover. So he can go to a two plus in cover if you don't reverse tides or if you play with the tides in the right order or put him on, uh, on something. He's fantastic. He's expensive, so you can't, and he's only got 12 wounds, which is a lot for a monster at all, but he can go down if you put him in the wrong spot. But he is good. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Octo Man quickly because he is. <laughs> I'm he the is one. probably one of the, he is one of the most controversial figures in all of Age of Sigma. I think he's currently in competition with Saurus Knights as the worst War Scroll in the game currently. And, and Gary Percival's in the chat saying that this is uh, the worst War Scroll in the game. So no. Uh, if... So I will say to Gary, no. I think he's fantastic if you use him in the right list. You use him in the right list. He's he's fantastic. All right. So what 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 is what is that? Uh, if I want to put Octopus Man in my list, what do I need to be thinking about, or what are the so traits of this list? If you're gonna go with Lotan you are going to be using lots of Namadi uh, because he is the one. So as the king buffs all the Akelian stuff, Lotan buffs all the Namadi stuff. Um, he also gives a little aura of plus one bravery, which is nice to keep your eels from running. <laughs> um, but it's it's mainly for the 
for the bravery and the rerolls to of to hit of one on Namadi. Um, he, he with with the shooting rolls with for Deepkin, um, you need, you have to target the closest unit, so he can just easily just stay out of out of range of something. Um, but if you have him like in the middle of uh, and a thrall horde, um, they don't need um, they just reroll once to hit. And it's threes rerolling ones. And if you've got a storm there, it's threes rerolling ones, threes rerolling ones, which is nice. And then he just sort of runs off and then just, if, if that, that unit dies, he just runs off and joins another unit kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that, I think the, uh, the interesting debate around low tan is that, um, we're not seeing that thrall build um yet i don't know if it will come or if the game will change with the next edition but oh. i think you know when it very first come out i think people were generally scared of these big blocks of thralls and they're tricky They've got i haven't me. seen it i haven't seen he, it yet yeah They've no, got he, one he inch range and third twitch base so they make it they're just a little tricky to run two ranks oh uh, right now that may change but it's just uh, they're lovely in tens that's why tens are terrifying they hit like a truck but in 20s, maybe he's a little inefficient to play super competitively. So a really nice little combo with Lotan is you take him and a unit of 20 Reavers off of the Soul Scryer, and then you bring them on board, and Lotan's with them, and he's giving the, those, like, 20 shots or whatever. They're, what, fours rolling ones or whatever, but it's a really nice little, like, kind of, like, shooting attack. And then he goes, they get in closer, and then they get, like, three attacks each with their bows, and it's it gets a bit nuts. But he's he's got a five-up ward save as well. You put him near a ship, he's on a five-up, six-up. You put him near Mystical, you, you put your ship in the right place, near Mystical, it's like a six-up, five-up, six-up, six-up, like... And, and, like, with bravery being a big issue with, with Deepkin, like, plus one bravery anywhere is great. Yeah, okay. Def something def definitely to consider, especially if you're going down maybe a Thrall build. Um, that's good. A any other, anything else we want to talk about from a hero point of view? I mean, you are split for choice when it comes to hero choices, and it's almost like you don't have enough points to, to choose all of them. So um, you got to think long and hard about the type of army you're building. Yeah, um, like if you, you've got to think about like the strength of your list and then what your heroes can add to add to that i think we'll go into that a bit more later i've got some good ideas for lists they're probably not the greatest but they use they go with the strength of the list rather than the just like the best units in the game yeah let's get, let's get through the Let's get through the unit choices first and then let's get into, and I'm seeing in the chat, like there's some people that throw some really good comments around some types of builds. So let's get through the other types of unit first and then how do we customize, tweak and tailor yeah. um, the army? Sorry, Ken, you're going to say something? No, 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 it's all good. I'm going to get the chat open somehow. So I'm doing that right now. Oh, good. Um, so unit choices, we've got battle line. You've got two uh, core battle line by looks of it. So you've got three. No, you get, you get you get one battle line, and oh. then it depends on your general what other battle line you get. I was thinking Reavers were, were auto battle no, line, but they're no, not. No. no, so you've only got one uh, generic battle line, which is the Thrall. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a couple of unlocks if uh, what you've got a general. Um... So if your King or Volturnus is the general, you get Eels as battle line. And if any of the little Ishran foot heroes are your general, you get Reavers as battle line. Um, which is nice. And what are you? What are you guys going for? Are you going for eels, thralls for bodies? I have to use the um, foot troops because I use the uh, soul the tie caster as my um, hero. So I must use the foot troops as my battle line. So you're stuck. You've got to take thralls. You because you've well, got uh, thralls route. or reavers. Um, okay. If you, if you use a foot hero, you get you can use the foot troops. If you use the kings, you can use eels. And are yeah, you so taking you, the Thralls or are you taking the Reavers? Thralls because they're terrifying if they're ignored. But that's the big thing. If someone makes the mistake of ignoring them, uh, they will take whatever they hit off the table. Yeah, and as an opponent who's faced both of you, um, when I'm looking at your armies, I'm thinking about the Eels, I'm thinking about the, the Sharks, I'm thinking about the Heroes, and Thralls are usually the last thing that you think about. But you're right, you ignore them and they're going to punch you in the face pretty hard. Yep. 
if they, they can't take a punch, like they will crumple if anything, a stiff breeze gets into them, but they will punch if you can just sneak them behind. Um, and, and then what like, are you going for from a battle line point of view? Um, I like the thralls, honestly. Um, I, I think they're just a really good unit, honestly. Um, I really want to like the Reavers. Um, it's just currently they're the same points cost as Thralls, and Thralls are just better. Like, if you dropped... Thralls are 140. If you dropped uh, Reavers down to 120, bam, you've got you've got a choice then to make. But currently, I think Reavers just... Uh, thralls just take, take the cake currently. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I don't think I've seen very much of the Reavers. Um, and then the other battle line that, that you often see is people um, sneaking in more eels um, uh, if they're going down that route. Yeah, so uh, we'll let Ken talk about eels. <laughs> but obviously the trade-off is is that you go down the heavy eel route. And I think, Ken, one of the armies you pl I played you, you may have been running something like 21 eels at the time. I was 18. I wasn't that nasty. Um, I, I, well, I do find 18, I think, is better than more. Because I, the army I run's got 50 foot troops plus the 18 eels. So it's got bodies to stand where they need to stand, plus the terror that is the eels. Yeah. So if you're going down, if you're going down uh, eels as battle line, um, you know, you're really obviously thinking about um, you may not have the bodies to be hold, holding and claiming objectives. So um, I mean, people have run 27, but my headache if you run 27 and you kill stuff, fine. And you walk away, you've only got three units to use. You've got nothing else to stand anywhere interesting, anywhere useful. You've only got three squads that need to do the work and go back to standing your points. And you really want them doing things when they're basically a third of your army per squad. When we're looking at the... Anything else you guys want to talk about from like a, a battle line point of view? Yeah, I think we, we definitely need to talk about the eels. <laughs> They're like incredibly important because that they was, are. That was my segue. That was I want to talk eels, and I want to talk two types of eels. They are semi battle line, so that's kind of kind of part of the conversation. Um, Ken, do you want to talk about Morsa, and I'll talk about Ishlian? Yeah, sure. Um, they're both good. I'll have to say they're both good. Ishlian are more defensive, but they are immune range. I'll let Ben cover those in detail. But they are nice too. Uh, I tend to run Morsa. Uh, which are the most aggressive version of the eels. Their big thing is their save is not bad. It's a four up. So in terms of points per wound and save on that, like, as a standalone, they're really not too bad from that perspective. In terms of damage per points, they're on the charge they're obscene. So they've got one interesting ability, which is once per game, they can do a zap. Now that zap roughly translates to one wound on average per eel. It is a random roll, so it's not always quite so accurate, but you can usually work with one, one damage per eel going in, and it only requires one eel to touch the opponent, and they all hold hands, and one puts a finger out and zaps them on the end. <laughs> That's always the way it works in my head. <laughs> I love that image. <laughs> just these beautiful elves just all joining hands at the end, and then just one's just like... With a finger. <laughs> I mean, in my head, that's the way it works. Don't, right. don't, don't pee on the, don't pee on the Morsa guard. Just don't like, don't pee on an electric fence. Don't pee on the Morsa guard. <laughs> I'm more thinking because uh, my uh, Boing Grot bounders have the same type of rule. I'm wondering what they're doing to get the shock, but that will be for the next episode that I do on Boing Grots. Career different and less positive. They're, they're rubbing, they're rubbing their feet really hard on just carpet. <laughs> All right. So we've got eels. We've got attacky eels. So uh, all right, what the eels are doing, but actually the main thing is once per game they zap. Uh, that's a really big deal. Again, depending how you use them, the way I tend to run is to, if I attack in turn one with eels, I'll send in two squads. I'll try and hit one strong target and one soft target. If I hit two strong targets, I'll zap with both eels. If I've got one strong target, one soft target, I'll only zap the strong target and I'll take the hit from the soft target. So it is a once per game thing, so you've got to pick who you hit with it. It's also nice if you get into combat and you've got a wizard on the side who's got five wounds and with luck you can take them out and just take them off the table before you even fight with them and you go put your actual melee into the harder unit that they're next to. So it is, you've got to pick when you use it, but it is a very convenient ability. So on top of that one there, when they charge, if you're in the run and charge turn, you reroll once to hit. 
which is really quite nice. So their, their main attack is threes and threes on the charge to rent and on the charge to damage. When you don't charge, you lose your rent and your damage output drops dramatically. That's the rider. And because I run Futh and Reverse Tides, my actual attack on my run and charge turn for the eel itself, which is a bite and a tail, is threes rerolling ones, threes rerolling ones. So the, the eels reroll ones to wound or the um, for Futh and. What are the, um, just to go back a second, what, what are the type of units that you uh, may select or why, like how, how would you decide where you want to put your eels um, like right, attacking so, and, and then try and go for the zap? So again, my list, I always talk about in context because every list is going to run pretty differently. I've got 11 drops. So 11 drops, I'm almost guaranteed to be given the first turn. I don't give it a whole lot of choice about that there. So if I'm going to give the first turn, I've got one six off the table. I'm hoping my opponent left a hole in their back lines and then I can drop them, get the plus three to charge um, from an off the table friend and then do a six inch reroll and charge. That's one squad and that's hopefully hitting a support hero or a monster or something that needs to die. My other squad, um, because I'm running charge turns, they move 14, they run six, the command point, which I tend to do, or at least you, you can roll a dice and choose. So you get them going nice and quick, they fly. So you roll 2d6 charge, and you either, if you can't hit anything interesting, you try and hit the chop on the end, and you don't use your zap in that case, because if you get double turned, you need some defense. And that's part of your defense against double turn. So you've got one squad hitting something juicy in the back line, and one squad probably taking up chaff, but that really depends on your opponent's deployment. And then one squad held in reserve. So I've got three squads, and they hit hard enough to clear most chaff lines. So they'll kill 20 chaff units in a charge with six. They can probably kill a monster. I've taken a Lara one hit with six of them before. That was a pretty lucky one, but she'll come down in one strike of six. I guess this goes back to your Sorry. point initially about um, Deepkin aren't, uh, aren't a, an army that will go through the grind, and they're not a grindy army, so you've got to really pick your battle and really kind of kill kill what you want to kill in that turn or maximum two kind of combats. One combat. One, one combat yeah. is like one the goal. Combat. If you're in there for a second combat and you get on your turn, you can't charge. You always want to be charging if you're playing with Morsa, so you never want to be stuck when it's the top of your turn and you can't run and charge or you can't charge them in. That, that's a massive weakness with Morsa. Yeah. Sorry, it, can you can you guys hear me still? Sorry, I have to yeah, change yeah, my good. headphones. <laughs> but if you can't charge with Morsa, their power output drops away to say nothing, but it certainly degrades well below what um, the uh, defensive eels can cover. All right, so so basically, if you're going to charge your eels, go for something you can kill. Uh, if you can't kill in the first turn, a one turn, know that uh, you're significantly losing the power. And uh, I know that's that's from my my point of view. I've always tried to absorb the the attack as much as possible, and then know that when I respond, I need to delete them. Otherwise, well, what, what really, what your opponent's going to do if they're playing it well? They're going to tag you on one end of your long chain. You spread out a long way because they're big bases. Absolutely, and, and, that, and that's and that's what I've done to Ben uh, in, in one game. Is I tagged, I tagged him with a bunch of grots, um, yeah, and then kind of like wind them down. But obviously, this is where um, um, other tactics came in. But um, definitely a consideration, I guess. I just want to highlight that um, that the eels are good, but know that they're they're not going to be something like um like uh some iron jaws like the ball boys that are just gonna that will grind you down no, they're very, they're very you, must retreat. you must retreat them because they're wasted and you lose your turn even if it is your high tide strike first turn you still retreat them unless you can get decent like you think you can kill your opponent because you lose so much uh from lack of charge but so that's the way you be if you're playing against more so you charge them <laughs> basically yeah. you you try and waste the side you try and waste their zaps, and then you just ch keep them in combat, like locked in combat. It's it's the only way, really. You use up their zaps, and then you just you keep charging them, and so they they can't charge, and then they're not doing rend, they're not doing that much. Look, really, I thought they'll, they'll, they'll with still, reroll twos. They'll still like kick you. <laughs> they still will hurt you because they still put out a lot of attacks, but just not with rend. 
put it this way, I caught a tree lord in the side of me. Oh, I couldn't zap it down. I didn't, we didn't get a good charge on. It was a two-op save. Um, that was it. It was yeah. combat. I would that, retreat. It would charge me. I'd retreat. It would charge me. That's the perfect <laughs> like thing to put into them. It's just like something with really high armor and then just charge it. Yeah. So just just be you know as deep can player be mindful of these situations and again what what Ken said earlier was pick your your battles really wisely. Yeah. Um, anything we want to say about zappy combat eels or should we go into like shieldy defensive eels? I think Ken's pretty much covered the 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 hitty eels. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you don't win a fight, they're not in a good way. You must win. And yeah. only target thing that you can win. Yeah, but they will, usually they will kill most things. <laughs> um, if you've chosen the right thing, yeah. If you hit 40 grots and they've got immune battle shock, not a good target. Yeah, yeah, that's not, that's not fun. Um, you use the Rendless Eels. You use the, the <laughs> defensive ones. Um, so they're like just the same eels. Um, they have the same attacks. They have the same bites and the same tail attacks. Um, they just, instead of having Zappy and Rend, they ignore all Rend. Which, which is great. That's, yeah, it just, they just ignore Rend, which is they're annoying. They're super annoying to fight. And you get them in cover, and they're on a three-up ignoring Rend. You put Mr. Shield on them, they're on a three-up wrong once. Like, so you, when they charge, they get plus one to save. You can never get them down to two-up save, but three-up is great. Um, because when you charge, you lose the benefits of cover. But, so that rule is like over, overrides the cover rule, basically. Oh, I'll also, one more thing with eels on my bow, but the colors of both of them, they both reroll charges and they both reroll battle shock built into the war scroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, the command group is fantastic. Um, the only thing that's different with the uh, Ishlian is they get three attacks with their swords rather than two with the spear. Um, and I found that they are great at just clearing mid-armored stuff with just bulk attacks. Um, they will just clear it. Like, you put them into grots. I think I put them into your grots before, Anthony. Um, and they just cleared all 20 of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, like, you know, they do hurt, but... Um, they obviously play a very different role um, in in the in the battle. They're very good for like protecting characters and stuff. Um, like use them as screens to protect your stuff. Um, they just soak it up really. Um, and if you use them in conjunction with certain other units, which we'll explain later, I think that's why certain units can be better than what they are thought to be. Okay, so if I'm, uh, you know, the, the the points are very similar. Um, that may change in time, but right now it's about 20 point difference. Um, how am I building my eels? Am I going, obviously Ken is going more, uh, combat -y ones. You're, you're probably saying what a bit of a mix. Like what, what are some considerations here outside of just attack versus combat? I think a mix like six Morsa and six Ishlian is a solid choice. Um, cause you've got like the best of both worlds. Um, if you want to be really aggressive <laughs> and really alpha strikey, more so are like thing for you. It's it's the current on meta. Uh, you can't miss. If you miss, you lose. But they're the current. All more so is the current on meta. Nastiest way to play them. But I, I think I think having a unit of Ishlian is incredibly important. Um, just because it stops, shuts down KO shooting. It shuts down Stormcast Ballista shooting. You just put them in front. First turn, they drop stuff down. It's like they have to shoot the eels. And if they're not using their rend, they're not doing that much, really. As an XKO player, I put... This is just down to my dice well. I put 24 light skyhooks re-rolling into three Ishlian guard, and I did two wounds to them. They're, they're that good. They're really good. Yeah, and, and there's an argument that shooting is coming back. So I got to play Dan Brewer's Skaven recently, and Dan's obviously a top tier Skaven player. And you know, he's there's a lot of really good shooting in that army. And you know, right now there's certain builds that are quite popular, whether it's Hagnar, whether it's you know Grimgust Reapers. It's very combat meta. 
but something to consider as we kind of potentially move into more of a shooting meta or see things like these ballistas, see things like Skaven shooting and, you know, more shooting type armies coming back. So with, um, with, with the shooter courts coming back with their big monsters, I think you're going to see a lot more shooting um, come back as a necessity because it's just, you just need to. Agreed. Agreed. So, you know, while the eel build now is probably down more the Morsa kind of way, uh, I would argue there's still value in the Ishlan, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. If, <laughs> honestly, if you're a new player, um, just get both. Get get six of each and then just play play them and then just see which one you prefer. Um, honestly, most, like... Most friendly games aren't going to care. You've got one weapon change on the entire model. If you're playing with against your mates, they're not going to be that fast. Unless they hopefully aren't that fast that the arm is not being exactly the correct arm. Yeah, or just, yeah, just get six and do what Ken does and just yeah, <laughs> replace your Ishlian with yeah more stuff. Um, yeah, honestly, it's it's really down to personal preference. Um, I can't go one way or the other. I like balanced things, so I'm happy to choose between both. But yeah, there 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 are pros and cons to both. Yeah, yeah, and again, it, I, I feel like uh, as I'm looking at Deepkin, there's these these like it's like sliding doors. Do I go? Um, Volturnus, or do I go the Alarian King, or whatever his name is? Uh, I've got uh, Aspect of Storm, Aspect of Sea. I've got uh, two types of builds, and I think either way are, are quite strong, and there's pros and cons on either side. So if oh. you've built one way, who oh, cares? Oh, oh, Ken von Solrender. We will teach this man the proper the proper terms for our people. I know. This is shameful. That's right. I'll, I'll, I'll just forget it after this you eat my soul. shameful. <laughs> Um, terrible at fluff. I, I read it and then it doesn't stick so well. <laughs> All right, so we've got eels. We've talked eels. I think eels have had enough light yeah, in the sun. Yeah. Uh, ben, you are a big uh, advocate of other types of sea creatures. Yeah, there are other types? baby. Really? So there are things are outside they? of eels. There are more than just eels. Not just I eels. haven't ever used these things. What are they? Please tell and, me. And because we're from Australia, I will just say they don't close beaches because of eels. <laughs> they just don't. I'm sorry. Oh, there's an eel in the water. Oh, no. Don't close the beach. There's a shark in the water, however. Everyone get out of the fucking water. Just get out now. This beach and is ben, shut down. Ben sniffed blood already. So, yeah, Ben, yeah. tell us about I'm sharks, ready. and then hopefully we can talk about our big flying turtles. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, I love the sharks. The sharks are why I started collecting Deepkin. Uh, I personally believe, and I know people out there, Opinions? Gary Percival, will argue <laughs> that they are terrible, but I think they are fantastic, um, a fantastic unit. Um, they don't obviously seem strong, but you ignore them to your peril, uh, essentially. Um, all right, this is the sales pitch or like a dating website or whatever yes. it is. Like, sell me on why I'm taking an eight wound shark. Okay. One, do you like Morsa? Uh, as an opponent, no, but. <laughs> if, uh, do, Ken, do you like Morsa? I may have an opinion. It's pretty positive on them, yes. Yeah. Do you like having Rend in the first turn? Yes. Do you like having no Rend in the second turn? I find it awkward and hope my opponent is dead. Then may I hope that you, you take some sharks because they have consistent rend, which is really good for like tanking stuff out. Like, what if I can kill someone in a single turn? Like, what if you don't? <laughs> what, if you're up, what if you're up against like plague bearers? Oh no. Oh, then I cry. Yeah, then I cry. cry. Horrible, horrible tears. Yeah. That's why you need to bring in the big daddy sharks and. Just jump the plate bearers grind with them. So when, I, so when I say that Ideneth don't have a grindy unit, the closest I can probably think are the sharks. If you take a big unit of four sharks, they are an incredibly grindy unit. I mean, they've got um, eight, wo eight wounds apiece. Eight wounds each. Which is um, massive. Like, I think uh, outside of Korgoraths and things like that, like, there's not a lot of there, units. There's, I would say they're comparable to Korgoraths. Um, if you ever faced a unit of six corporates, it's a nightmare. Um, so having four sharks, I traditionally take them in a big unit of four. Um, that's knowing the risks involved in taking a big unit of four. Um, but having consistent rend and just being able to just shove them into someone's face and then they will just stick there 
is amazing. Um, so they get five attacks with the riders. It's not great, but you know, it's, ma it's mass attacks. So you can deal with those um, high armored units called the, like Night Haunt or something um, with your mass attacks. Um, so you get. Yep, that Night Haunt and Ben's frozen up again. But I'll, I'll jump in. And one thing it's, that I. Oh, it's just back. Oh, hello. Yeah, you froze again. Oh, crap. I was just telling us, yeah. Sorry, ben, am I am I back? No, you're yes. back. Yeah, go on, go, continue. Okay, okay, okay. Did I talk about the riders? You mentioned yes. the yeah, yeah, riders. Yep, they're, they're, they're okay, the but riders. they're not that great. They're mass attacks. Um, they're good for dealing with stuff. Twenty attacks on a unit of four. Fins, you get four attacks minus one rend. Uh, you get four of them, so there's sixteen attacks from a unit of four. Threes. Rerolling ones, threes, rerolling ones. If you take Futhan, uh, and then you get the bite. The bite is like amazing. So uh, the bite is nate two rend, and it's flat three damage. Um, that will tear through whatever you want it to. Um, the, the thing that I really liked was what you did to me, uh, where the shooting attack then yes. works in the in the combat phase. I thought that was really cool. So like, there's a benefit between phases. Not not yet. Yeah, yeah, so you, you look at the um, uh, the combat profile of the shark and you're like, it's pretty solid. And then you add in the shooting attack on top of the shark, which is like just the, the, the cherry on the top because it just gives you like a really nice mobile little bit of shooting to take out those stupid little characters at the back that you can't get to with regular eels. You can't. If you hit a wall of chaff, you're hitting the wall of chaff, you're not getting the character behind. Yeah. With the sharks, you get to like pop a couple of shots off at the um at the characters and if you can do that and you can get a at least a wound on the character uh the sharks and they're within 12 they get to reroll their charges um so there's two loadouts there's the harpoons and then there's the nets i like the nets um most people like the harpoons um the nets just less dice to roll less Less annoying, less less time. It's good. Um, the the harpoons are threes and threes, no rend, one damage. You get three attacks at each, so it's twelve ring unit of four. Um, however, the nets are only one attack each, threes and threes, no rend, but they're flat three damage. So what I've done with Anthony before is just like punked his little grot goblins, like little grot shaman or something from behind his lines with with like two shots at my through. So yeah, they buff, they buff nicely with the kings. Uh, they just it's, those units that takes the king's buff and really runs with it. If yeah, not, it's, no. it's great. Um, what I did today, actually, uh, the one day of tournament um, against Nathan Princey, is I did nine damage to his Dracolings with just the shooting from the sharks. That's not fun. <laughs> just killed two Dracolings with with some no rend shooting, which is great. Um, and it's just it's just really nice. It's just nice having a little bit of shooting, which I think is is an important part of Eidnet. But then what the great thing about sharks is is once you get the king's buff on them, they just go from like pretty good to just mind blowingly amazing. Um, if you're lucky enough to get Volturnus's command ability off on them three times, um, you get like you've got four attacks with the jaws each. You've got uh, seven attacks each with the fins. You've got eight attacks each with the riders. It's just they just become an absolute, just like like bulldozer that just like mulches through whatever they do. Um, the thing, only downside I must mention here is you need to be alive in turn three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is where our playstyles differ between you and me. Yes, that you're very much more aggressively alpha striking. I'm more hold off and just sort of. Move, be a bit more flexible, move around, like see what the enemy's doing. Strike when you need to strike. And I think, I think the difference, Ben, with yours as well is um, when I've seen sharks in, um, in lists, often they're just dabbling in the water and taking one. And it might be just one of those like annoying cavalry that's sitting on the side and it's not a lot. While Hon you honestly, definitely. All that people take them for is to fill the requirements of the Akelian core. <laughs> yeah, you, you you actually go deep and you'll you'll take three or four. And I think that's where you're starting to see the the real benefits of taking the sharks by because you're committing to it 
and then buffing the crap out of them as opposed to them just sitting there on the side. They've got eight wounds. They're nice, but they're not doing a lot. Don't don't get me wrong. Like single sharks, uh, I think they're really good for like just character hunting. Um, they just they'll just swim around the edges, just circling like sharks do, ready to just like strike when they need to. Um, but if you really want some like proper power and proper like grinded, just take a unit of four. Now you have to be very careful with them because they are only bravery six. Um, so you need to keep the king of Alternos near them to give them the plus one bravery. So if they lose one, they're not running anyway. Um, or keep at least a hero nearby to be able to uh, battle shock immunity them. And this um, is where but, you said that you lost one to battle shock, and that's that's quite yeah, an expensive battle but, shock. Yeah, be aware that you need to be very careful with them. You just need to know the risks involved when taking them. Um, I honestly haven't really had a problem with that as long as I've kept my king or command points available to save them when they need to be saved, they're totally fine. Um, but I have had a unit of two, one died, and then the other one just ran away. And it was like, well, that was a 140 point unit, just ran. Not fun. <laughs> Anything else we talk about sharks before we move to my personal favorite model? And I wish I could run four of them and put bandanas over them and call them the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, um, they just have, yeah, they just have consistent rend, which is amazing. All right, so sharks, eels, argument on either side. Pick your flavor. Let's talk about Blastoise. Yes, let's talk about the, the, the turtles. Magnificent. Probably the most Results. underutilized unit in your game, in your army. I don't mind it in reverse tides because I can use the cover mechanic. So the turtle has a really, you're paying a lot of points for a really cool mechanic, which is a 12 inch bubble of cover. Yes. If you, run, if you run natural tides, you already have cover turn one, which is why they're, they're not so popular. If you reverse the tides, because you don't get to cover turn one, that mechanic actually becomes quite interesting. Yeah, I think if you, can, turn one. if you can work that cover mechanic to be part of the army, I think it, they can be really good. Not to mention, they're also, they also kick ass, like massively kick ass. They're, they're pretty scary in combat as well. When when would you take them? Would you take them when you've got lots of thralls? Would you take them um, to play with friends? In all honesty, they're, they're just a little pricey right now. That may change. In fact, we hope it does. But they're to be right. absolutely competitive. They're a little pricey, but they are an interesting. Like they they unlock an interesting concept. They make that cover mechanic fascinating because you can use it if you're running Ishlan and or if you're sorry, if you're running shield eels and you don't have cover and you don't charge, you've only got a four up save. The, the, the awesome thing about they pair really well with Ishlian is they go in, they charge in, they get the plus one to save. So they're on a three up. And then if you have a turtle nearby, in the next combat phase, they're still on a three up save. So it, it has a really cool mechanic. Like mechanically, it should be really interesting. It's just a little pricey for its output right now, so you don't see it so often. I I I I think that it's it's fairly costed. It is expensive, but it's fairly costed um, if you use it right. You have to use it right to be able to get the most out of it. So what I'm hearing is that I'm building a deep kin list. I'm not adding a Leviathan because uh, it's a behemoth. It's my only behemoth option. Um, but it's something that's very tactically. And, and obviously, you know, the rule of cool, if you're a you know, you're, you're, you're building an army because you want to paint it or you want to just casually play, that's okay. Um, the comments, yeah, obviously... By, by all means, just take it. It's fantastic. <laughs> sure. yeah. The comments here is, you know, like we see, you know, take it if you want to take it. It is very cool. If you're looking to get, like, a super optimum build on list, it might not be the right price at the moment or you probably want to take it and build around it to make to, to kind of get the most out of that, um, the the points that you're spending. Is that fair to say? It, exactly, yeah. So if... if if you want to play with it competitively, you need to build around it. But the cover mechanic, the cover mechanic is fascinating. On thralls, it doesn't really matter. They go from a five to four, which is nice, but sticking on the eels and the defensive eels especially is really very neat. Oh, and having it around near your eidolons and you're keeping your king on a two up save, or keeping your eidolons on a two up yeah. save, like it's, it, it's a real life lifesaver. Like. It, it's a, a very me mechanically interesting. It, it really gives you I mean, a new. Flavor, which is uh, not to mention it's a slouch in combat it's not a slouch in combat like 
its jaw bite is if you get a hit roll of a six, it's six mortal wounds. Um, it's threes, twos, neg to rend, d d six damage. Um, the fins are four attacks, uh, threes and threes, um, neg one rend. They're flat no, three no. damage. Fins. Let me check the fins. That's right. That's all right. That's right. The people of the internet can pull up war scrolls. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like yeah, it's not bad in combat. It's it's not an absolute apple it's, monster, but it's not bad. It's not a slouch. Um, it's not a slouch, honestly. Like four, like twelve damage, pretty pretty reliably is like nothing to be snuffed at. All right, so Leviathans, they're good. Build around it. Plus, it's Don't shooting. It does. It's a bit of an all-round thing, right? It has abilities. It has shooting. It has combat. It has lots of wounds. It's. I, I like it. Um, it's, it's, it's a support. It's, it's a lovely support piece. It supports the army that you build with it. It's. It's interesting. Yeah. Definitely build around it. So um, that's all the units. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about from a unit's point of view, or should we kind of get into like allies and maybe um, then kind of like some of the battalions? We didn't forget about the soul render, like the second oh, cool, the second or third coolest model in the entire range. It's, it's a lovely model. The poor it, soul render. Um, it heals thralls. Unfortunately, you tend, we tend not from more than 10 thralls in a blob. So, so its ability is a little underutilized. Sorry, but like he is... Lotan is fantastic compared to him. Like, <laughs> like honestly, he's just a bit meh. <laughs> and that's why we well, didn't talk about him. He, like, we don't have not, to wear everything. No, he, I will he, say. He, he serves a, a unique purpose, but it's just, I don't know, it's just not enough. If you're running big blobs and you take, instead of going food them, which we keep talking about, there is an additional enclave which does add plus three to returning. So I was a, yeah, yeah. a returning version of the Thrall list. It's you took lots of them. Yeah. It, it's, and, and they're pretty combat as well. I mean, like... Yeah, I think it gets one. It did kill damage. Me. Yeah. But, like, it's just... It's, it doesn't fit the eel game or the shark game. Yeah, but I, I think with with time, I think if he changes in points, I think he might come into a bit more favour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like... He's really cool. I, he's a fantastic model. I love him to bits. Um, he's so a watch this model space I or render. Might but, be coming to a table next year, but right I, now. Again, with the... He's he's like a turtle. You need to build around him, basically. You can't just take them, because everything in the Deepkin is so expensive that it's just like you can't just waste points on a... If you're playing competitively, waste points on a... On just a character, <laughs> a cool character. But if you, I mean, he's a cool character, and like he could babysit like a unit of thralls. Um, he's just, I've played him once, and he just only brought back one thrall a turn. It just like didn't really seem particularly that good. Yeah, fair his, call. His fish did better in combat than his actual like hook thing. Allies. I think, Allies. I think we kind of like, I think. We kind of drew as much blood out of a useless war scroll at this point. Um, <laughs> you leave not, him alone. No, no offense, I'll render, but you're a bit useless for your 100 points at the Lotan moment. Is better. But, Sorry, Gary. Lotan is better. Well, Gary, Gary's better. dropped off. He's going to go play okay, in the heat. Okay. So um, allies, you have an amazing pool of allies. You've got a Darkling Carven. You've got Daughters of Cain, Eldritch Council, uh, Order Serpenta, Scourge Privateers, Shadow Blades, Stormcast, Silver Neth, Wanderers, do you tap into your ally pool? And if you did, why? I love Eternal Guard. They're so cheap. That's the one thing Deepkin don't have as far as I'm concerned is cheap. So it gives me eight point bodies that have a shield. They die. I don't really even care, but they will stand in the front of my lines and they'll get charged and I'll feel nothing when they die. Or I can stand on points if they live. Yeah, it's like they they are the longest lived elves and they're the my shortest lived elves. They're 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 a solid solid choice. Um, honestly, the Eternal Guard are great. If you take Iron Rack and they get the abilities of the of the Tides, uh, they they're in they get cover, so they get all the benefits of cover that you know they always get like rerolling to hits and stuff. Like they're fantastic. They're so cheap. And they're cheap. They're very cheap. They're cheap. Yeah. First they, defense, and they let me paint the banner because I can do a bit of freehand, which is. <laughs> do we tap into any other of the? Um, yes, like, I, 
I have some ideas, but I'll let Ken talk about his oh. time I got a bit more. I mean, look, that's the main thing. I, I honestly use them in my army, so I've got all the eels behind and the thralls behind because my thralls die too easy. So I put 20 Eternal Guard in a straight line across the front of my deployment. Yep. And if you want to elf me, you can kill crap. I don't care about them. Um, that is entirely their job is to die. So yep. I don't even look at their war score. They've not done a wound, and I am totally happy they haven't done a single wound. They have absorbed death that didn't belong. My thralls deserve to live. These guys, no. Jesus, <laughs> you are you are cold, cold, cold. <laughs> Ken Van Solskrier. I've got the sea people. You've got the, you are the, you're people. Of, of the sea people. We brought allies. What for? Because someone has to die first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love sticking with the theme of CLs. I love the idea of uh, scourge privateers, the, the the pirate elves, the elves that fly the seas. Um, I honestly think that a unit of 40, um, 40 Corsairs and a Fleet Master is a really good combo for Eidnet because it gives you lots of bodies and it keeps with the theme and they're not too bad. You get a little command point from the, from the hero, um, cheapest hero in the game, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's ridiculously cheap, 40, 40 points. 40 so. points. And he, he can put his... Command ability on the Corsairs, which is reroll all hits, which is yeah. fantastic. And I think they do two shots each, so it could be like 80, 80 if, shots, I think it is. You arm them with crossbow, with yeah. ambos, like, it's great. Um, I think, again, you have to take them in Iron Rack for them to be really good, um, because then they get the, the, the tide table, so they can run and charge to get cover, uh, they get attack first, like, I think they're, they're really solid. Um, Oh, I'm, I'm currently working on 40 Corsairs and Fleet Master to put in my Iron Rack list. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they turn out. But um, I, if for, for 300 points, I mean, you can't go wrong with like some bodies, 40 bodies. Yeah, mm. yeah that's cool. Um, <laughs> I, I personally, sticking with Wanderers, I personally love the Wanderer characters, um, particularly yeah. the uh, Wayfinder and the Way. Watch Watch is out. quite nice. Yeah, the archer, even the spell weaver, the fact that you can get a dispel scroll of a hundred point character. Yes. Yeah, the, the spell scroll's great. To auto unbind um and a hundred point wizard. But if you if I wasn't bad spread spare points and wanted a cheap wizard, that uh, she's fantastic. Yeah. And the the way watcher just being fantastic as just a if you have 120 points spare, you can't spend it on anything except for another character. Um and it's minus one to hit. And so you just put him in cover and it's just like minus one to hit. And he's just doing consistent like shooting. It's really annoying. Um, or the way finder with his hail of doom arrows is like, that's once per game, 3d6 attacks with his bow. Like that's going to be really nasty against like little characters. Just really annoying. Yeah, you don't have much good spot removal with Deep, and you don't have any real spells that do damage to pull off a, a five wound hero. You yeah. don't need to chase them down, so being able to poke them with arrows is pleasant. Yeah, like having some really high quality shooting is really good. Um, that's why I like those those characters. Um, I've used think... Dawncast. I've used uh, the Lord like Iron on Griff Charger. Uh, <laughs> Stormcast. It's a wizard that's fast that I can stick on points. That's something I really struggle with is quick heroes I can put somewhere if I need to use heroes because I tend to use the foot heroes which are a bit slow and quite fragile and that's just a step up in terms of the uh, defensiveness and the foot heroes yeah yeah I mean Stormcast is solid in any order list like yeah I mean you could always get the uh what's it called the wizard Stormcast with the uh the comet which is a quite a, a common yeah, ally, yeah. Uh, ally as well like I think you know if, if I if I uh, we could probably sit here and do a whole episode on on allies because it is quite deep, um, uh, but I guess it depends on like what what the gaps you're trying to fill, or you know, I think the the fleet master at forty points is a great a great option. Um, there's so many cool, you know, we haven't even really talked about daughters of Cain. So, oh God, don't give me started. Daughters like, like, of I think Cain. there's a, a lot of cool like, options, but yeah, yeah. Like, I think if I think about the fact that we've probably gone for. 
you know, almost two hours already. And we've, you know, the, the amount of value that's sitting in inherently in your leader choices, your unit choices, the flexibility, um, you may not have the points to go allies, um, yeah, or you yeah, may not have yeah. enough. So, yeah. yeah. And like, you know, the, always the challenge is, is like, if you take allies, you don't get allegiance benefits. Um, so it's like this, this balance. Another, just one more that I think is fantastic is just a shadow blade assassin. For 80 points, you just hide him in any order unit and he just pops out and he's like, ta-da, surprise. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Hey. Little, little little annoying hero that just gets in the way. Like, Would be better if he had rend, but yeah, we'll, we'll skip oh, that one. Doesn't matter. He just pops out <laughs> and like just annoys people. That's why. Any other burning allies or should we talk battalions? Yeah. Oh, so one last ally is the Kin Rai Heart Render Spell. Uh, they're popular. Yeah. But they're yeah. a late game, annoy your opponent off the point. They're just convenient to hold in reserve to avoid the five man, like holding a point somewhere. Or yeah, that's a great choice. Point. Yeah. Just yeah. being able to just drop order. them is great. Generic order, just take off the, the, the uh, late game, get points back. Yeah. Yeah, I that's a fantastic agree, choice. Couldn't agree more. They are a great ally choice. And they're like, not even beginning to go into like this eldritch council and like all this kind of stuff. Like, you could take an archmage um, from eldritch council and get the eighteen inch six up ward save, so you could give your put him, put him near a ship, and your all your stuff's getting like a six up six up ward save. It's like you could start getting a bit ridiculous with this stuff. Um, yeah. Law you master could, on your, your your aspect of the storm. Yeah, exactly. Um, Actually, the sister of thorn is the last one I mentioned. Uh, yes, the box to stick on the defensive eels. No yeah. one getting wounded when you attack eels. That's quite yeah. like for me. Um, even uh, the archmage on dragon, I think, is really good because debuffs are such a big thing now. Um, just being able to his spell goes off on a four up, and you pick a unit, and they're just all the spell effects just go away. And it's like it's three hundred and twenty points, but like with the amount of debuffs running around at the moment, like just being able to just remove them from your unit is fantastic. Yeah, um, particularly with he can also unbind endless spells as well. So with I've seen the Skaven stuff and it's terrifying. So just being able to just unbind it is great. So not only are you spot for choice with units, you are spot for choice for allies. So yeah. uh, good luck defining your two and a half, two out two thousand points or two and a half thousand or one thousand point list because you are spoiled for choice in this book. The, the problem is you can't take multiple allies. You'll only have at least room for like one or two, yeah, like ally slots. Like you don't yeah. have four ally slots. I wish we didn't have that. There's a limitation. I would take three. I would take two right now. Yeah, currently I think pure deepkin is still the greatest. But yeah. uh, agreed, and often, think, often with allegiance books, it, it staying inside the book is always uh, normally always more powerful. But th I think there are a couple of exceptions in there. If you want to like, if you have a favorite unit or something, like I love the corsairs, so I'm putting the corsairs in. Like, they look cool. They fit the theme. Anyway, battalions. Yes, yes. So you've got uh, five, six, uh, five. You got alliance of wood and sea. Um, you're going to teach me the name Corpse, the Namadi the Corpse, cool. the Phalanx, and the Royal Council. Yeah, there's only three in there that are really any kind of worth speaking about. We won't talk about the Massive Battalion because that's ridiculous. Um, that is the what one? The the Massive one, the Mega Battalion. Okay. We won't. Don't talk about that one. There's no point. Um, wouldn't see, I don't know, I don't really see the merits of that one. So Alliance of Wood and Sea is a combination of Sylvaneth and Deepkin, but it's a defined Sylvaneth. It's not like you get... Like, it's and, all min size units. To fit it in, it, everything's min size, and it's not optimized. Shall we say it works? It's just not an optimal choice. If, you, if, don't you, get, if you don't get to choose. If you've got an existing Sylvaneth army and you want to dabble in Deepkin, like, honestly, take that battalion. Because you get, you, get you get a little bit of smattering of everything, and it's kind of nice, like... It, you don't have to buy the full army. You just get a nice little smattering, and you get some cool things. So, but yeah. that, you know, handy tips there. Um, yeah, the three main ones, though. Uh, we'll start with the Royal Council because that's it's not bad. It's expensive. Though. I don't like it personally, but it conflicts with my play style. I like my uh, I like to start off the table. If you do that, then you can't use the battalion unless you just want the command point and the item. I honestly think in your ear list that Royal Council is amazing. 
The problem um, is your soul scryer um, is off the table, and I like him on the table. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I can see that. It, but like with, with the royal council, you don't need um, you don't need stuff. Like, just you give them an extra plus six movement, and then you put the soul scryer on them, and it's just like plus nine yeah. movement. They're already like fourteen. They run, so it's like agreed. Agreed. I, I also used Otel to protect myself from deep striking and other alpha. Yeah, yeah. Deals. yeah. But, uh, it, it's flexible. I'm not a huge fan, but I can see it working. I, I've seen it work before, and like, but people have gotten it wrong. You need to keep the Tidecaster and the Soul Scryer within three inches of the king to be able to get it to work. Correct. <laughs> you can't yeah. just, as long as you have them on the board, you, you can't just be like, oh, there's one on the board, there's one on the board. No, they have to be together. Yeah, and it definitely says in the War Scroll that uh, the battalion must be within three inches of the general, so, yes. and that's when the benefit comes into play. Exactly, yeah. But yeah. It's, it's just an extra command ability that you can actually use. Like, you don't get command abilities until turn three, so it's nice to have a little command ability. So Royal Council is one of the battalions that you, yep. would, you would highlight? What are the other two? Um, the Mighty Corps is... I don't know. It's... I think... It, it did well recently, but it's not optimized i would say so for it to work well you need a lot of models you need a lot of thralls so if you're going down the thrall route this is going to increase the ability to bring uh more thrall back as opposed to a dice roll yeah so the soul render in that battalion automatically brings back three and if you but, combine that with more fan you get an extra three on top of that so you bring back six but it's quite mind. an expensive one where you need at least two units of thralls two units of reavers plus a hero so it, this this if you're going to go down this route it's like it's you're committing down you're gonna uh, you're gonna commit to like you might as well take a big unit of 30 thralls if you're going to do that um it has the ill list strangely enough one of the most recent postings of a good score used this battalion it was a 18 plus ill list it just happened at a battalion to get the command point in the item mm. yeah it's it's pricey but i i think given some points changes i think you could see it a lot more What's our third? Uh, the uh, Kellyan Core. Which um, is your turtle, your guard, shark. and your sharkies. All the sea creatures. It sounds like your list, Ben. Uh, not really, but kind well, of. Almost. almost yeah. Um, it's a turtle. <laughs> it's, it's basically, if you want to have all the cool stuff, it's a great, it's actually a really great starter army. If you want to go with the fly stuff, riding stuff, it's a great it basically the list builds itself. Um, it's fantastic. Like if you want to start deep cannon, you know you want eels. Like a Kelly and Core is just a great little starter. Um, it gives you three rolls. Like you're rerolling every phase, which is quite cool. It's only, it's only for one one thing. It's one dice per phase. But it's one dice per phase, which is like there's like, seven phases in the game or something. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah, once per phase, you can reroll one hit, one wound, one save, one run, one charge. So and these are all different phases, right? It, it's nice. It gives you some options. I played an opponent who had it. Unfortunately, they forgot a lot of the reroll and they just wanted to use the command point and the um, item from it. It's cool. Like, it helps. Uh, it just, unfortunately, the turtle is expensive. And so this devotes a large chunk of your army and build your army for you, which is good or bad it's, it's i think it's good because it does help you build for new players it does help you just build your army um i with my current list i would take that to uh, yep i'd take that too uh mostly because i want more more well, i want uh, at least a turtle or more turtles ben you're back with us hello sorry hey um, i would take this battalion at 2.5k with my current list, I would just add the turtle in and then the, the battalion, and then it's it's ridiculous then. Like, yeah, that would work. At 2.5. It's crazy, yeah. But, like, at 2K, it still works as well. Like, it, it's a solid army build. But obviously with the Leviathan, your, um, uh, the, the challenge definitely, it, ma it does make it a 2.5, or at least gives a bit more flexibility, but... You uh, definitely have to build the turtle around it. Like, you have to use the, the, the strength of the turtle with that list. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, no, I agree. I like it. Um, like, yeah, you could easily take a Royal Council and the Achillean Core. It would be stretching for points, but it would be relatively solid. Always stretching for heroes too to put the these on to. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, it's it builds itself. It's a nice build-yourself army. It's all the cool stuff. Cool. Speaking of cool stuff, let's talk about your... Um, some of the customization. So um, one thing we haven't actually spoken about uh, from an allegiance point of view as well is you get some boats. Oh, yeah. boats. <laughs> we talked about the boats. Yeah, we totally forgot about the boats. So I'm a new player. What do I get on top of the tide? Two full boats, either two halves or two full boats. So two separate terrain pieces is how they're treated. But they're complete terrain piece per boat. So either a full boat is one, half boats one it doesn't matter it's up that the piece is treated as a complete piece um right for yeah i use them to mess with the move with most of my opponent's movement so they do have a defense so as they give you a save and they do hurt your opponent i don't find those great because the save is very close range and it's not that many wounds they are good for because if your opponent doesn't fly they mess up the way they move around the board really badly but you deploy them after you pick table sides. So you know where they're going to deploy and you can mess with their deployment really chronically by sticking very big terrain chunks in there. They are deployed three away from terrain six from objectives, so you can't camp them on anything on objectives, but you can force a foot army to, to really mess with their transition across the table. Yeah, so the, the two abilities that they give, uh, if your IDNF unit are wholly within six of the ship, um, from the hull, I don't, I measure from the hull, just easier. Yeah. Um, if your unit is wholly within six, you get a six up ward save. So it's like a, it's like a, your own, bring your own mystical. Great. Um, and the other one is if an enemy unit at the start of your hero phase is within three inches of the ship, um, on a four or five, they take one mortal wound on a six, they take D3 mortal wounds. One, two, three, nothing happens. Yeah. Um, so it's really nice for just picking off little, little wounds, like, what happened to me today, literally today, was my eels did 11 damage to a black coach, and then the ship just finished it off. Yeah, but it's nice. It's a little poke. It's annoying for your opponent, but the biggest thing is messing with movement. Yeah, it's yeah. Huge. You can, yeah, block, it's, you can block off lanes. Like It's a yeah. it's a big, chunky size, so it's not like it's like double the size of it, like a now more. Like, it's quite quite it's long. Huge. Yeah. I it's, personally... It's a long. Yeah, I personally like placing two halves on the table because aesthetically it looks nicer. <laughs> but like two is like the, the go-to, like there's so much detail on them as well. And they're reasonably cheap. They're actually, yeah. they're, they're not being, you're not forced to pay 150 bucks per terrain feature. No, they're quite generous. So, yeah. And they're great for just normal scatter terrain as well. Like you just want to use them as that. Yeah. Um, they also add plus one to rituals. Don't forget about that because rituals are great. If you stand nearby, yeah. I stick them in my opponent's deployment to mess with them, but if they're in your own, they're a defensive and ritual buff. Yeah, defensive. I, I go forward fast, so I tend to be trying to put things in their, their half versus Ben, who plays a bit more flexibly. Yeah, I tend to huddle my guys around the ship and get the rituals off. Awesome. So what command traits, like now we're customizing our armies, you know, what are the, some of the command traits and the artifacts we're going to be thinking about? Do you guys look outside of uh, your battle time for artifacts? Are you staying inside? Let's talk command traits first. Uh, I don't get traits because I take Volternals as a general. And I get Born from Agony, which is plus two wounds on my caster. Okay, and if you were, let's say in a hypothetical world, you uh, weren't playing with like a named character. Yeah. <laughs> in, a, in a hypothetical world, let's imagine like some new person's like, Ben, Ken, please tell me what I should pick. What stands out for you? I think they're all relatively solid. Um, I think there's about four good, cho four like solid choices in there and then like two okay ones. Um, there's the Born from Agony, which is plus two wounds, which is great. You put that in an idol on, they're now 14 wounds. Um, not fun for anyone. Um, another one is you get plus two bravery to that. So if you're taking your heavy Namadi list with your idol on the C, you make him the general and you give him the plus two bravery. He's now plus five bravery <laughs> to everything within nine of him. Which That's is ridiculous. ridiculous. It's like considering considering you said that one of the weaknesses was low bravery. So yeah, yeah. Um, that's you huge. just have, you just have to spend a lot of points and and make it work. But you can make you can make it plus five bravery. 
Um, another one is you automatically get plus two attacks during high tide which is if you don't have the king to buff it, it's like you put that on an idol under the storm and turn three, they've got six attacks with their um, with their spear. Uh, I will say, though, if you don't use the king as your general, you don't get any high tide command ability. If you don't use the caster as your general, you cannot reverse tides. So you'll tend to find that either a king or your caster is your general, uh, just because of the other restrictions the game puts yeah. on. But I, I can see the, the merits of a C being the general in a heavy Namadi list. Um, just because he offers so much utility. Um, and you can like you can give him 14 wounds. You can give him plus, an extra plus two bravery. Like, um, it, it, you, you, there are ways to build it, and you can like build them around it. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't, some, good, I don't, good, honestly, some good considerations, but I think, you know, as you guys have said right from the start, that there are some strong builds that uh, some of these decisions are going to be dictated for you. And this sounds like one of those decisions where you're just naturally going to go towards something else. So you get the reverse tide or, you know, there's, Honest, there's some other benefit. Honestly, it's just about how you want to build the army. Like it, it'll all depend on how you want to build the army. Um, there's, there's so many different options. Um, I'm just trying to read through them. There's a neg one bravery. Which is kind of nice. Um, reroll increased. runs, reroll runs and charge rolls for your general. I mean, good on an eidolon if you need to get him in. Um, what about spells? Let's let's go something maybe a bit more sexier. Uh, is there any spells that you guys like from your law, or are you finding that you don't have spellcasting? Yeah, pressure from the deep. <laughs> <laughs> I've picked spell. up one of Ben's eels with it, and you break coherency, your eels die. It's a monster. You're a monster. <laughs> you, you squish it. You find it, you squish it, and you break coherence. So it's, it's, a, it's a spell It's from the law that you can choose. It goes off on a seven, uh, and it's essentially you pick a model within 18 of the caster. Uh, if you roll over its wound characteristics, it gets destroyed. This is pressure of the deep. Pressure of yep. the deep, yep. It's great for, as I said before, great for removing demon banners. Um because then they don't get to come back. <laughs> you choose the unit, or you uh, try and break coherency. Like you, you break a, a key model or coherency. It's a yeah. very tactical, very nasty little thing to use on people. Like if someone was to put a big row of stormcast down in a big row, you just punk out the middle one, and then they have to choose: do I take that side or do I take that side? Just um, make sure you don't engage really in combat. You pull out of combat if you do that, so they can't. Uh, yes, they can't pile in. <laughs> yeah, make sure they can't pile it because they're their problem. Um, it's also good for like death stuff. Um, if you want to get rid of that neg one bravery from death banners, kill the banner. Yeah. Um, you want to get rid of that auto six charge, get rid of the horn blower. Um, I mean, they, death can bring stuff back, so it's not really that much of an issue for them. But like against like night horn against like chain rasps, that banner guy gives them ten bravery if you. Zap him out. Um, they're down to six bravery. Um, yeah, that, that, that's mental. And you start thinking about being able to break coherency, taking out some of those really critical, like, you know, for example, my free people, I've got a little banner guy, and that allows me to roll um, uh, on a roll of a one, I'm immune to battle shock for that unit. So that one particular model, and that's always in the center, right? Like, I'm always going to delete my unit so it's away from that, that model. You take that one model away, and there's only a few few models in the game that can do that. Um, can really underpin a strategy, and I like that. Do you know what's absolutely fantastic? Um, is with your handgunner fetish, um, you pop the piper, and then they can't get the, they don't shoot when you charge them. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I could see you getting really annoyed at that. <laughs> my, my, I get annoyed at a lot of things. I pop your piper and you're like, all right, I'm sending my sharks in. Oh, I'm going to shoot. No, you can't. You don't have a piper. Yeah, no, that's, it's a lovely tactical spell. Uh, it really makes a mess of people's plans when you pop the wrong thing. Yeah. You want to use it against two, one or two wound characters for reliability, yeah. but you can always go for that special, like, crush the character on a six. Yeah. Uh, so I like it. Scary. I don't like it. Don't do it to me. Do it to other people. Do it to my group. Don't do it to um, me. No. <laughs> I've said no. that about eels many times. I'm happy to play them. I don't want to play against them. They're not so pleasant. Yeah. 
All right, so that's a definitely standout spell. Artifacts. Um, what are the uh, what are the stand like the artifacts that are kind of screaming out to you guys? Um, so I don't actually go outside of the book that often. Um, I like the. I think I've got one choice, so it's kind of like Cloud of Midnight. Well just stick that. Yeah, Cloud of Midnight. Solid. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also think um, so. Cloud of Midnight is once per phase, uh, once per game, beginning of any phase. You pop it. You can't target it. So if you get into a really bad combat, um, you just pop it and then you just retreat out again. Do you have it's a do you have like a standard shooting. do you have a standard but, game planner when you try to do that or is it very situational? It's very it's situational. It's just I know that I have it. It's just like like a, a credit card basically to just to get out of jail free card. You can threaten someone. Say if you don't charge me, I'm gonna charge you. If you do charge me, I'm gonna cloud a bit nuts so you'll do nothing. What do you wanna do? Yeah. It, it's a really, or also mess up shooting, of course, deep can you must target the closest unit. So you can stick it in front. If someone's got all the guns, pop it and say, can't be shot this base, you lose a shot, lose a turn of shooting. It's yeah, a the, tactical option. Yeah. Um, who, I also, who, do, who do we put that? it on? Who, who do we put it on? I use the king, because uh, I'm going to fast king to carry my artifact. I put it on the Eidolon of the Storm, just because he can just go off on his own, and just having that little... He can just save himself in a really bad situation is really handy. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if, charge, if, pop if it. you get, if you get stuck in the wrong place, then you just pop it and then you just charge him out and retreat him somewhere else. Um, I think there's a, there's a couple of really good artifacts in there. Um, one in particular, if I had to take a second artifact, I would take it. Um, it's called the Adrian's Last Lament, and it's once per game. Uh, all Ideneth wholly within eight inches of the bearer uh, just become immune to battle shock, which is again with Ideneth low bravery. It's like that's really good. It's a good choice. Speaking of choices, one thing that we haven't spoken about is your. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the exact term. So obviously, you've got you know Stormcast have got chambers, daughters have got temples. You have enclaves. Uh, enclaves, yeah, enclaves. yeah. So like. Is, is there a standout enclave for you? There's, I think there's like three, maybe four really good ones. Um, they they don't have that many rules to them, but yeah, they're pretty good. Um, there's there's your typical iron rack, which is all your allies get the tides of death table, and your castles get a buff to casting, and yeah. casting gets a, a, look, cast. a lot nicer. Yeah, uh, there's Dom Hain, which is very popular. Um, I don't I don't see. You. I think Futhan is better than Domhain, but there you go. Um, I started Dom Domhain and transitioned to Futhan. Um, it just has so much more power. Yeah. So Domhain um, is re-rolling uh, hits of one for on the charge. when you charge. But on yeah. then you get if you reverse tires, you run, you get run and charge turn one, three, and five, and you re-roll on one, three, and five. So you're missing turn two and four. Your rerolls, but um, the secondary build of the Puth is much stronger than the Domhain one. Yeah, Dom and Domhain also rerolls wounds against monsters, which yeah, is it's, kind, of, kind of nice. It's good for like thrall heavy. If you're running like a thrall heavy list, you might want to run Domhain because you don't, you won't get that inbuilt reroll ones to hit often. So it's nice on that. Um, I don't see it on eels because why would you take that on eels when you can run Futhan and it's just so much better. Um, Futhan essentially uh, turns your uh, retreat and charge into a run and charge, and then in those two turns, you get to reroll hits of one for everything in the army. So you don't need your king nearby to deal with stuff, and you don't need uh, you. Yeah, that happens, and then all your mounts get to reroll ones to wound all the time. So you don't need your idol on hanging around all the time. If you reverse tide, you almost must use food then because otherwise you've got turn one retreat and charge, which is useless. If you aren't running food then. In it's so good it's good if you get alpha struck, but it's yeah, it's it I'm gonna get first turn because I might do it too many drops. So yeah, yeah, yeah. never a headache for me. There's also another tricky one that a lot of people haven't really thought of, and that's what was brought up to me by Dan Brewer, um, which is Nautila, which uh, I think could really work well in a, a, a heavy Namadi list or a turtle Ishlian guard list. So that's so, re-rolling failed rolls for uh, units in so, the combat phase and a charge so, move. So when 
they get charged by an enemy, they get to reroll ones to hit against the tar the target that charged them. So it's very defensive. Build. I hope you can take the hit with maybe glass. Well, that's why you got the turtle in the Ishli. <laughs> The, um, the, 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 spell, the spell from that actually uh, enclave is quite good as well. Casting value of four, and you worsen the Ren characteristic no. by one. That's yes. good and bad. It deletes your other spell choice. Which is mm. fine. Like, oh, wait, no, it doesn't. My mistake is a different one. It, does. oh. it, it doesn't delete your... And Riptide. You, get Lords of the, you lose Lords of the Deep. You still, you still get Riptide. You just don't get Lords of the Deep. Um, yeah, you, but your Eidolon of the Sea will always get his signature spells. It's just Tidecasters that have to choose that spell, which is great. I think that's an awesome spell. Um, stopping your uh, eels, <laughs> you cast it onto the Morsar Guard. They're now rend one. Like, good luck, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it sounds like it sounds like the the choice is not as important as let's say a daughter's temple, and there's not a a standout like a Hagnar. Um, no, but there's, there's some no... nice. Nice, cool stuff that you can get. If you build your army the right way, um, like I found that my list, Fufan works really well because there's lots of mounts and it just synergizes really well with sharks, eels, the king's mount. Like It just works really well. And the timing is really nice as well. If you just get the timing right, it's like you, it's got inbuilt redundancies. So if you lose your king turn one, turn two and four, you'll still get reroll ones to hit, which is like still fantastic. Perfect. And that's uh, for the entire of the turn two and four. Not anything, just on else, anything else we want to talk about from an enclave point of view, or should we uh, talk a little bit about endless spells and then maybe some final wrap ups around, uh, you know, what are your tactical advice from your, all the experience that you've got? Um, anything endless. else from an enclave? Uh, there's more fan, which is the bring back an automatic extra three um, thralls or like Namadi units, which is okay. And then there's Briamdar, which is. The Soul Scry gets to take uh, three units instead of two off. And all infantry get to uh, move over terrain as if they flew, if as if they're flying. That's good. Not bad. Yeah. It's got its builds. But it sounds like there's other choices that are just better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it just depends. Again, it depends on how you build the army. You can make it strong, but you just have to build to it. Yeah, yeah. So, Ken, I know you're an endless spell man, and I know you've got a choice up your sleeve. What do you like and why? And then I'll go like, ask Ben. I like the Maelstrom. I only have a single caster, and I love the spell, but I fail it. Or I got opposing casters. My preference is to toss the Maelstrom into opponent's casters and giggle, and just give up my casting to mess with someone else. It, it, it are great spells in the game, but um, just messing with my opponent's casting is probably more effective than getting my own spells off. Otherwise, I'll toss them a shield, but usually I like the Maelstrom. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you know, we've talked a lot about that uh, magic is not a strong component of, um, of the Deepkin. Obviously, you can build it that way, but it's not probably your strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, you're not, you're not getting that many plus to cast, so... Ben, anything that you take from the from the endless spells, or not really? If I could fit it in, um, I, I think Riptide's more important than an endless spell. Um, but if I had to pick one, it would be Pendulum, um, just because it just moves you, it forces your opponent to move off stuff. Like um, it doesn't come back to hurt you. Um, like if you can line everything up perfectly, you just run the Pendulum right through enemy army, and it's just like C six mortal wounds. It's disgusting. <laughs> but yeah. I want I want deep in endless spells. I want my giant wave endless spell. Well, let's let's see if we can do a grave tide, but uh, with a fish giant and tsunami. <laughs> all, all those all those goldfish people kind of flush down the toilet. It's gonna come back as a grave tide, uh, but with the sea. So it sounds exactly. like endless spells, not that big for the deep kin. Everything's just too expensive to fit in <laughs> endless spells. Yeah, it's, it's, it, look, it's, you know, same, same same conversation around allies. It sounds like that they've got great ally choices, but again, not enough points. You've just got too many cool things inherently in your book. Unless you're patching a hole, don't do it. For do sure, it. for yes. sure. And like, as you've said, you know, you throw the Maelstrom in because you are weak in, in magic, so you want to mess up other people's plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. not a bad choice. I mean, you, right. could, you could throw in Geminids as well and just keep stacking that Neg one to hit, but... You know, the issue is casting it. 
you but need it's, caffeine. It's, yeah. it's just not easy, and we've got no buffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So let's talk. Uh, let's start kind of getting to the last piece, and that is, you know, we've done a really good job talking lists. We've talked about, you know, kind of customizing those lists. Let's kind of wrap up now and say, well, you know, how do you get the most out of your army? And I know you guys have talked a lot, so maybe this is a quick one. But you guys have already shared a lot around, you know, from the eels and kind of combinations of uh, of units and the um, sideboarding with the soul scryer and all that good stuff. But how do you best play with these boys on the table? We have two very different styles. <laughs> so the Ken style. The Ken style is Ken style is redundant threats, and then hit the softer thing or hit the things you're allowed that you can kill in one strike. And then the game's only done. Honestly, by the end of turn two, the game's won or lost. With my style, it is super, super aggressive, super alpha heavy. If I happen to hit the wrong thing or I don't win a fight, I crumble pretty badly just because the eels must kill or they're done. Yeah, I mean, and we've, we know before that uh, uh, Deepkin are not a grind army. Not particularly, no. Well, not in the traditional build. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then you, you're, you've got a different style, and that is? I like to play the long game with them. Um, I like to just manipulate the battlefield, just move stuff around cautiously, and then just like strike when I need to strike. Um, it's like it's like the, the angler fish waiting for like that that fish to like come into range of your like little little light thing, and just like and then you grab it kind of thing. It's like it's a lot more long game. It's yeah. still very finesse what Ben's doing. You cannot make many mistakes in your movement because you get caught out and cleaned up. You yeah, are not exactly. Really resilient in this army at all. You have to. You just have to be careful, and um, you just, yeah, you just have to pick your fights. That's all. That's all I know. It's just pick your fights where you need to, bully where you need to, and then just like a lot of yeah. My list is very much. Um, it's got two threats. It's got the eels. Everyone doesn't like eels, so they go for the eels and they ignore the sharks. And much to their detriment, the sharks come around and just like mince up whatever they need to mince. Um, or they go for the sharks and then the eels just like mince whatever they need to mince. But yeah, um, redundant, fast threats. You're quick, you hit hard, and it's all about using the speed and having things that you can toss away if needed and have alternatives. Yeah, yeah. I've got a few list ideas. Um, they're insane. <laughs> Which such as my triple eidolon list. Uh, th three eidolons of the storm, uh, and then a, uh, min units of thralls, uh, a soul scryer, and two tide casters. And you really hone in to get that eidolon uh, ritual off. And then those rituals, those eidolons, just go ham. Like all of those. Eidolons are uh, rerolling all of their wounds until your next hero fades. You're a nasty man. It's it's going to look fantastic on the table. It will. Your army is painted fantastically. And then you make one of them the general. Yeah, it's insane. But yeah, like, with the turtle, you need to just like build around it. It's strong, but you need to build around it. So what um what advice would you give a new player who is uh, about to? join or maybe they got a battle fox for christmas or you know the uh the the new um start collecting boxes just dropped um what's your advice those top are fantastic you're getting eels and you're getting foot troops you need minimum 30 foot troops minimum and the eels are well as we've all said people love them netlist love 18 plus but you're getting oh, both yeah. in the same box which is really good the, the battle i like the battle force because it comes with sharks um it's also a really good choice as well. You just get a bunch of cool stuff. Um, but if I was to offer new player advice, um, don't start with 2K. Um, start with lower points and like learn to position things in the right way. Um, learn to keep things in the right distance. Uh, learn, learn the dance of the holy within. Um, dance the dance. Um, honestly, just try everything out. Um, don't just look at a war scroll and look at the internet and be like, "Oh, everyone's saying that mods are amazing." Just, just try, try it for yourself and just see what you like doing. Um, positioning is very important with them, though. So you make one wrong positioning move, and yeah, everything crumples. Ken, any any advice that you would give to a uh, a new player? No, oh, I think Ben's covered it quite nicely. 
oh, you really don't want to go buy 27 eels and a king. That's not how you play this army. That's not how you start playing. Give it your third or fourth army, sure, but don't do the traditional, I just want all the eels and the king. There's are interesting ways to play it. And honestly, the foot troops, you need them. If you need foot troops, you need variety. Otherwise, a game is, it's not always winnable. Yeah. And it's not always interesting. I start, start with a thousand, and that's a really good starting point to like learn about keeping distances and all kinds of keeping the buffs in range and everything. So, and then work your way up. And if I was a player currently with deep kin and um, going okay, but I want to kind of get even better, uh, any last advice you would give me uh, to help me go from good to great? Uh, raid a village and reap all of their souls. <laughs> No. Um, this, this is pre-game, right? Like, before you yeah, submit yeah, your yeah, list, yeah, yeah, yeah. go uh, harvest some souls from a little fishing village yeah, and then... Go down to Wollongong, just harvest all their souls and then come back again and you'll be powerful. No. <laughs> um, I don't know. Player mates. Um, I love what I do, which is the reverse types of food, then 18 eels and 30 thralls and some allies. It's flexible. But so the lists are out there. There are good ways to do this that are known. There are good ways to do this which are not known. Ben's got plenty of those. Try it out. The player mates, that's what they're there for. Um, this is a game, a social game with other players. Yeah. Go try um, it. To all those eel players out there, don't knock the sharks. Honestly, a big unit of sharks does work. They don't, ate my eels. Don't ben knock has them. killed eels with sharks before. Do not knock them because they are actually really good. Um, they might not seem so good, but they're good. Once you put them on the table, they, they do, their, do their work. Yeah, and, and, and a piece of advice that Heywo Twitch in the chat has given me that uh, is a really good call out. And while it's kind of like looking into the future, um, you know, Games Workshop has at this point in time announced um, the Warcry, I think it's called, Warcry, the potentially skirmish game. We don't know a lot of rules at this point in time, but... Um, know that you know they're looking at ways to get in at a smaller point level and i think to your point ben learning the mechanics and learning about what they can and can't do yeah. before you jump straight into 2k and just grab an internet list and think it'll do well but actually it's uh it's the the mechanics in game and the right decisions so as when i first started playing age sigma i started playing just skirmish and that was a fantastic way just to learn the rules of, I played KO at that time, so it was just great to learn the rules of my army, you slowly add another unit in, you learn their rules, you learn how they synergize with the existing units, and then you just sort of build it up. And I feel like you learn a lot more than just taking a net list and just building it and then painting it and then running it. No, um, great advice. Agreed, agreed. Great advice. If people want more of your advice, Ken, where can they find you? Are you on the internet somewhere? And I'm at the Games Cube in Parramatta. Um, and that's honestly, I have no Twitter. I have no nothing. I'm pretty technically terrible like that. All right. If people want to know more from Ken, get I'm on Facebook and in groups in general. Comment in the comment section below. If there's enough interest, I'll harass Ken to get a Twitter page <laughs> or something. Uh, I promise to log in. I imagine people like Florida and there's a lot of cool people in America right now in the chat. They're not going to be able to come to GamesCube in Parramatta. So. Fair enough. All right. What we'll do, we'll do Facebook and I'll work out Twitter at some point. Ben, where can people find you? Where can people find me? Nowhere. <laughs> um, honestly, I feel like I need to get into this whole Twitter business. Um, All right. Also, if people <laughs> like to talk to Ben, comment in the comment section below. PM I me. Ben. I PM will me, like DM me. Like, I don't know if you want some cool. I'm on the Ideneth page. I'm on the yeah, we're both page. Off. Um, All right, they're both they're both on the Ideneth page. There is a good start. If they want to learn more, go to the Ideneth page. If, if Maybe you, wanna, you guys can send me the link, and I'll put it in the channel description if, or something. If you want to call me out for like me being absolutely insane and like eh, your rules are wrong, rah rah rah, like go for it. That's fine. I'm happy to be wrong. I'm not. All right. All not right. Wrong. Yeah. Cool. All right, boys. Lads, thank you very much for this uh, very in-depth conversation around Ivan Deakin. I think you've really proven your expertise and you see why uh, you guys have performed exceptionally well at events. And, you know, you're not just math hammerous. You guys really know how to put this into practice. Um, if it ever gets, if the book ever gets revisited and there's points changes and endless spells, happy to get you guys on the next uh, edition. Yeah, but, sure. Yeah. Um, thank you both. 
Um, I look forward to now playing you guys and knowing your tactics and still losing to you. But uh, let's see how I'm we fine. go. I want to play your boy. I want to play your your grots. I really want to play the grots. I haven't played them yet. Big fight. All right. Yeah, we haven't uh, played properly. We've only played Moon Clan. Yeah, yeah. So Anthony, we've got to go out with our outro. This has been Canon Ben the Fishman Man. man.